Right, let me get on with me live. Shalom, shalom, shalom. All praises, glory, and honor to the Most High, the owner, the creator, the possessor of all things. Long live his anointed, beloved son in the hearts and minds of the faithful elect. Another honor and humility, Melchizedek Ministries. I'm your brother, Malachi Maccabee, your servant. To my left, I got my brother. Nehemiah ben Israel, shalom is thou. All praises, glory, and honor. Y'all see the title. The ascension and martyrdom or the martyrdom and ascension of Isaiah. Uh and uh his his visions of the Messiah. If y'all been following us the past few weeks, we've been banging real hard on just proving the existence of the Messiah. Uh yesterday we went to Enoch's vision. Today we're gonna go into Isaiah's vision, basically, and uh the prophecies he was dealing with and how uh he saw not only he saw like the dissension, he saw the the uh, the dissension of the Messiah into the world and his ascension as well. So we're gonna go ahead and get into that. Uh, praise the glory and honor. How y'all doing today? Let me check this live chat. And then we're gonna go ahead and pray, pray on in. I'm glad ain't none of y'all of y'all watching us. Obviously, y'all not out there popping fireworks, so that's a good thing. Fourth, fourth of your lie ain't got nothing to do with you or your people, and you Negroes are not independent. Fourth of July. You know what I'm saying? July too. So it's all good, glory and honor. But July actually was named as the Jew of your seeds. I don't like to put the Jew on it because uh you feel me, we the Jews. Uh so I call it the fourth of your life. It's all good. Good thing none of y'all are out there. If y'all on the live chat with us, one thing I can say, I can be a witness. Y'all not popping no fireworks, so all good. All good. Our independence day is coming. We'll be free from all of our oppressors. Feel me? And to the end, we got work to do. Uh, we got a nation to raise up. We got commandments we need to keep. We got to walk and operate in the fruits of the spirit. There's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of work to do, but we should be in to win it. And then let me shout some of y'all out on the live chat. I got my sister, the ATL Georgia sister, Nate Israel in the building. <laughs> she said, you heard early, huh? Shalom, shalom. Who else in this deal? Print Blake, my dirty south, brethren. The word Hebrew, Shalom, Shalom, Venetia is long. Where you at, Hebrew? Pull on up. You ain't that far from the St. Louis City gates. Pull on up. 12 tribes athlete, Akshim Sean. Blessings to you as my off the grid brethren, Kashibru, Shalom. 2VI, you got the axe. My brother, hallelujah. J Root boy, Shalom. Solomon Mack, my brethren. What's the word? Ask him to get some email. Nehemiah asked, do you got some emails? All right, Nay Israel says she got a question. I pray we can answer. Go ahead and shoot. African di African diaspora united in Christ. A-D-U-I-C. Shalom. Shalom. I heard that. All right. Yashar Eliezer, my born again brethren. What's the word? All praises. Ellie Malek Tillman of Judah. Steve Tillman. The Yacht Chains in the building. My brother's blessing. Tell you, brother, you Krishna Irby, North Carolina. North Carolina. My sister, blessings. I push Yahoo. Naomi Israel. All right. Shalom, shalom. Lion of Yah in the building. All right. What you mean, a lot, brother? We not prayers. A lot. What you mean? Oxam Shon. Urban Israel, shalom. Andre Ingram, New Moon. Krishna Irby, okay. I need Malak. I am king. Hey, all good, Hebrew. We all good. All good. Don Ray Shayak out of D-Town, my brother. Uh, that Israel. Anybody know the scripture? That's the dead. That's the dead body of a particular prophet who brought another body back to life by touch, something like that. Hmm. Maybe you can Google it or something. I don't know. Get a little more specific. Aisha Frazier, my sister from the north. What's the word she broke? Fourth tribe, Kanye Yehuda, the heathen slayer. My sister. Shout out to you too uh, for your support. But the Kaftans, I think I said it right. You say Kaftans. I think it's Kaftans, though. The, uh, the, the culture dresses for the Shebrews up here that's kind of scared. To wear, you know, dresses or whatever. Good looking, my sister. Queen things, Proverbs 31. Shalom, sh shalom. 
Uncle Obed in the house, big old 581 Shalom. And boy, I know it sounds like Beirut, Lebanon over there. Where you at, boy? Howard Brown, my Jamaican brethren. Blessings, brother. Blessings. Iris Stevens, TX. Blessings to you, your family. Tell your mama, Shalom. Tell her Malachi, say Shalom. Poppy Shoe, my sister. You got to ask, too. You've been kind of quick on the trigger there, lady. You all good? I think I need to call call it thou. All right. Line of Yah in the building. Shakai Israel. Shalom from Arizona. Abiyah, Eric Ak. Yeah, it's going in. Yeah. Somebody stole the notebook. Oh, man. Well, let's try to find it if we can. Yo, Southern dialect. I don't know if you, I don't know, sister. You keep running, you keep running Florida. I don't know though. I don't know. I don't know. You got to procure your accent. I thought about it when you brought up Satan trying to get it hold of Moses' body when he died. Okay. Okay. Yeah, y'all just get a little more specific. You know, help us locate that deal. And let's go over the story. Quashin is my brother. Blessings to you. All right, Yahoo, Yahoo. Yeah, y'all, we about to go into the martyrdom and ascension of Isaiah, uh, found in uh, the extra biblically endorsed books. I know some people got a problem with them, not our faults, not at all. Uh, We've been in the uh, spirit lately, just proving the Messiah, not only in the law and the prophets. Uh, we was in Enoch yesterday. Enoch saw him, called him the elect one or the son of man that was brought before the ancient of days or the, or the, uh, the master of spirits. He was in there. Uh, now we're about to get into this uh, pseudopigrapher. I got a hardback copy. This is volume two, The Ascension of Isaiah. All right. Volume two, The Ascension of Isaiah. All right, we're going to get into it. Where Isaiah had to go through, uh, we read in the book of Hebrews in, in the chapter of faith in chapter 11, it says some of the prophets that the most I dealt with were sawn in half. Have you ever asked yourself, well, which prophet was sawn in half? Who was sawn in half? Because it says in Hebrews 11. You understand? Well, who was sawn in half? You're going to get your answer today. All right. Mina J, my sister. Miriah bin Yamin from the tribe of Benjamin. Blessings. That's right. Let's get her done. All right, that's the St. Louis City sky. Sound like Beirut, Lebanon around here tonight. I think Rose running around here popping fireworks for the 4th of July or Yola when it has nothing to do with vow whatsoever. All right, so we're going to be in the scriptures. We're going to be in the, uh, the uh, regular scriptures today, and then we're going to be in this ascension of Isaiah for the most part. Uh, we're about to pray on in. All right, we're about to pray on in. Y'all share this video. Y'all like it. Uh, share it with some of your naysaying aunties and uncles, your joining cousins, uh, your pastors, your, your pastors, should I say, your imams, anybody. You dig? You are not supposed to be in the spirit of joining hands with your oppressor, let alone, let alone celebrating and worshiping how he's celebrating worship. We are a peculiar set apart holy people. Holy means set apart, Kodesh. Some of my brothers say Kodash, set apart, meaning separate, holy. And we got to set the standard around here, man. And we don't do it, who going to do it? Nobody. We got to set the standard around here, man. You understand? Killing all, all her prophets. She said, has Israel ever prayed or paid for killing all her prophets? Uh, yeah, it's called the transatlantic slave trade, OMW. We went through the worst ever. And then the, the last prophet we sold out was Hamashiach. And, the, and when I say we, I'm talking about the, the, the rebellious leaders of our nation. They say, you know, and let the curse fall on our children. They said it. They said it. You dig? And I propose uh, that's the reason why we went through the worst uh, degradation and bondage in the annals of world history. You understand? So, yeah, uh, uh, the, the debt's been paid or it's being paid. It's coming to an end. You understand? So may we be found worthy in that day. You dig? Our praises, glory, and honor. All right, so look, let's go ahead and get this prayer off. We're going to face Jerusalem. We're going to offer a prayer to the Almighty. Pray that he stay with us. We're going to say the uh, Master's Prayer in Hebrew. If you don't know what I'm saying, just keep it in yourself. And then we're going to say it in English, too. You feel me? You're going to repeat that. And we're going to pray that his, uh, you know, his spirit come dwell amongst us and dwell in us. Need mind messing with stuff as usual. Just stay where you at, man. I'm trying to, you know, going off. Yeah, stay where you at, man. 
I know. I should really never touch What's going on? Just stay where you at. Where you going? Where you going? You trying to go all the way over there? Stay yeah. with you. <laughs> all right, y'all. We about to get it off. Might get this prayer off. Again, I'm about, we're going to say the most highs, though the master's prayer in the Hebrew tongue. They asked him how to pray. He gave him the Our Father prayer. I'm going to say it in Hebrew. If you don't know what I'm saying, just keep it in your spirit. And then you can repeat it when I say it in English. You feel me? And let's get her done. All praises, all glory, all honor to the most high. Abi no, Abi no, Shabbat Shemayim, Shabbat Shemayim, Tapo, Tapo, Ka, Yeah, I say, Yeah, I say, Ka, Ka, Kane, Kane, Et Lakem, Kukenu, Kukenu, Hayon, Uslak Lanu, Oh, Katainu, Kamo. Shell so king, gum, a knock new, a knock Lanu, Wa all, Tabia new, Lee Day, Nisayon, Key, Key, Ink, Coke say new, Mean Hurrah, Key Laka, Her mom Laka, Wahagura, Wahati for it. La Ome, La Ome, Ola me, Ola me, Amen, Amen, Hallelujah, 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 Praise the mighty Yah, our Father, our Father in heaven, holy is your name, holy is your name, may your kingdom come, may your kingdom come, and your will be done, and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we also have forgiven those who sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the mighty Yah. Yo, hey, wah, hey. Yahweh. Elohim. El, el, yo. Rain down. Your ruach. Hakodesh. Let your power and your mind live in us forever. Bahashem. Amashiach. Yahushua. Yod hey wah hey. Yahweh. Elohim. El El Yom. Rain down. Your Ruach. Hakodesh. Let your power and your mind live in us forever. Bahashem. Hamashiach. Yahushua. Yod hey wah hey. Yahweh. Elohim. El El Yod. Rain down your Ruach. Hakodesh. Let your power and your mind live in us forever. Bahashem. Hamashiach. Yahushua. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Praise the mighty Yah. Let's get it. That's right. Let's get it done. Let's get her done. Let's get her done. Let me share this on social media real quick. Oh, praise. You know what I'm saying? Good to see y'all in the building once again. Shalom to anybody uh, just now entering the chat. Shalom. Uh, what we've been doing as of late is just defending the testimony of Messiah. Uh, not only out the law and the prophets proving the validity of the New Testament, but also in the extra biblically endorsed books that some brothers and sisters are scared of. Uh, but it's all good, though. Even if you don't deal with that, we'll, we'll meet you where you at. We dive deep, though. You know what I'm saying? Not to brag or nothing, but we have we don't shun away from certain things. You understand? And there's, uh, it even adds more to our case about Messiah as we get into even more biblically endorsed books. And guess what? It's stuff written about it. All right? Today, we're going to be getting into some extra writings of Isaiah. And uh, Isaiah, Isaiah the 53rd chapter. Isaiah the 52nd chapter, when you look up salvation, one of the names, one of his many renderings of his names, some brothers say Yahweh Shah, Yahushua, Yahshua, uh, Yahshua is right in there. 
when you look up salvation in Isaiah the fifty second chapter, salvation is in there. Zion, your God reigneth. You understand? Uh, his visage of visage was more and more than any man. Who was that talking about? Isaiah talking about himself. Like who was beat to a bloody pope? Took the worst beat ever. He professes the Messiah. Uh, Isaiah the seventh chapter. Isaiah the ninth chapter. A son will be born. Who will hold the title of the mighty God? He will uh, inherit an everlasting kingdom. The kingdom will be on his shoulders. So it, it, it was beautiful to get into what's called the martyrdom and ascension of Isaiah and read even more about the coming Messiah. You understand? And uh, again, in the Hebrews, the 11th chapter, there's a phrase that says, They were sawn in half. You understand? So, what prophet was sawn in half? You dig? If you don't get into what's called the extra biblically endorsed books, you'll never find out. This brother actually was sawn in half by the wicked rulers in Israel. Who, uh, and as we read today, you're going to see who had Satan ruling in them. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. All right, so let me share this out real quick. And then we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, first scripture we're going to go to more than likely going to be in uh, the Hebrews, the 11th chapter. We're going to read that real quick, just the first few verses about faith and then we're going to jump down to the part to where it says they were sawn in half so we're going to read like one through six then we're going to jump down from like 32 through 40 all right and then um as we go through this ascension of isaiah it's going to be other scriptures that's going to witness it just like we did with enoch yesterday and it's only adds to our case to further prove that the son of the most high is 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 real he's, he's solid his testimony is a sure foundation all right so shalom to everybody in the chat. Shalom to the brothers in the crowd today. Young brother stopped on by. I'm glad you ain't out there. I'm glad you ain't out there. You're supposed to be here anyway, man. You know what I'm saying? That ain't got nothing to do with us. Uh, we probably hear some of them scripts too about when our true independence day come. You know what I'm saying? Independ you're not independent from this nation if you're doing everything that they tell you to do. Have to spend that nation's food stamp money on this stuff. Yeah. You're not independent. Independence is when we run it. You understand? We we control the policy. We set the rules. You understand? And that's in the world to come. We actually going to rule this earth. That's why it's good you get it now. You get to understand it now. That way, when it's time, you ready. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why it's good. Let that look. That's pagan. That's heathenism. That has nothing to do with us. Matter of fact, when they when this came around in 1776, we were still in physical bondage. Some of us were the firework display. Like if you couldn't, if you couldn't benefit master no more, he'll take you into town and tie you up to a tree and put and put fireworks all on you and, and burn you to a crisp so they can enjoy their fireworks. What's called the Fourth of July. You understand their independence from Great Britain. And if you get even deeper into it, they still ain't independent from them because you still paying taxes to the crown. That Queen of England, she's still receiving taxes from America when you're done talking. You understand? So, so I mean, that's that's some deeper understanding, some deeper studies. We ain't even here to talk about that. The whole point is, this is not our Independence Day. That's what the Fourth of July is all about. Supposedly, independence from their oppressors overseas, which was so-called Great Britain, United Kingdom, or whatever. So they declared their independence. When did we ever do that as a people? We ain't never declared or commanded. Look, we independent. We free. We ain't never did nothing like that. Also, y'all check out uh, Frederick Douglass' speech given on the White House steps, July fifth, eighteen what fifty two, something like that. Fifty two. Yeah, where he where his, his speech was about what is the Fourth of July to the Negro? <laughs> nothing, nothing. It has everything to do with slavery, bondage, heathens ruling over us. You feel me? So today, when brothers get out there and do that, it just shows the uh, the level that we have not achieved. We have not achieved the level of supreme intelligence yet. We still doing everything they say do. White. That's the problem. Scriptures say, envy thou not your oppressor and choose none of his way. Matter of fact, let's grab that real quick. All right. Envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Oh. This has something to do with your oppressor. And, and if we travel back in time, like we jumped in the DeLorean, back to the future, and travel back in time, you understand, you will find your forefathers as slaves you understand being sub being subjugated while the heathens was out celebrating and doing their thing we was in bondage you see your great 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 granddaddy and mama grandmama out in the cotton fields or the sugar plantations or whatever 
being subjugated and ruled over and working for zero cents an hour. See what I'm saying? This has nothing to do with us. All right. Everything to do with them, nothing to do with us. You understand? So I'm glad you up in here. The spirit of the almighty brought you here tonight. All right. So that's what it is. You got a Bible? No, I know you probably got I'm nine times. I'm talking, I'm talking to little brother. Here, come up here, grab this uh small Bible over here. Yeah, grab that right there. It's a little bit, little bit bigger for you. All right. If you don't know where the book's at, go to the front and look in the table of contents. All right. Go ahead and try to share this real quick. Now let's go ahead and get her done, y'all. Let's go ahead and get it done. I'm glad y'all ain't out there commiserating, celebrating the fourth of your life. Uh, we're gonna go to Proverbs first. So go to look look up Proverbs in the front of there in the it's table of contents. We're going to Proverbs the third chapter. We're gonna start at the 31st verse. Let's hit that real quick and then we're gonna hit that. Corporate cell front right here that way. Um the people can help you out right here. Uh, navigate this thing. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt, no doubt. What's your big brother supposed to do for you? I don't think he'll mind. <laughs> yeah, chapter three, we're gonna start at verse 31. I'm gonna share it on the screen too, real quick. I'm gonna share this on Facebook. Some, somebody at the door. Somebody at the door. You already started the text box. That's what's up, about. My praise and glory and honor to the most high. I want to creator and possessor of all things. Y'all bear with the Hebrew for a minute. Mm. My sister, blessings, blessings to thou. All right, shalom, my sister. Sister Odell, you in the house. All right. Bang. I'm sure this real quick, yo. And we have Proverbs 331. First scripture boys. All right, all right, cool, cool, cool. All right, let me share this on the live screen real quick so y'all can see what it is. I ain't got to keep looking at a Hebrew face. All right, bang, bang, bang. Blue tents with Shalom, Marcus Israel, Shalom, Marcus Dreams. That's right, praise the mighty Yah. That's right. All right, let me go ahead and make sure we pull it up real quick. And we're going to be in that uh, ascension of Isaiah today, y'all. The ascension of Isaiah. All right. Sound like again Beirut, Lebanon, around St. Louis. I'm pretty sure it sounds the same where y'all at. All right, one second. I don't know why that one right there keep popping up. I ain't messing with it. All right, Nehemiah sending out texts and everything. As my brother say, I'm sending out Texas. And he's sending out the state, huh? You know it. <laughs> Not be a few of them dropping Texas. Not, <laughs> not text. Texas. All right. Wow. <laughs> it's all good. And now you got beat up your little brother, man. That little squabbles. I mean, we don't, but we do. All right, y'all. This right here is part of the book of Proverbs. All right. Chapter three. We're going to start at verse 31. Then we hit a few scriptures on when our independence really is. And then let's get into this ascension of Isaiah. And, and Isaiah had visions of the Messiah too. Why everywhere we go, we keep seeing visions of the Messiah. And everybody talking about him. But, you know, in 2019, Nick Rose online claimed he never existed. Well, he was made up. But everywhere we go, even the Dead Sea Scrolls that, that even predate the Bible, everybody's still talking about this son of man, this son of God, man. Yeah, you know what's really going on her. All right, so let me know if y'all can see that. That's pretty big. I know if being a bit Yahoo Yahoo Yashael is on her, she probably can't. She probably say, make it bigger. That's it. All right, bang, bang, bang. All right. Second Kings 13. Oh, second Kings or first king. Okay, that's what's up, sis. All right, bang, bang, bang. All right, let's get this, y'all. Let's get this so we can get some understanding. Proverbs 3, 31. What does it say, y'all? Proverbs 3, 31. Yeah. 
Envy thou not the oppressed. Right. And choose none of his ways. So the scripture is saying, don't be jealous of your enemy, your oppressor. You understand? And that applies no matter where you at on, or what geographical location you at on this earth. Israel has been oppressed. We at right now, our main oppressor, even though he ain't the only one, our main oppressor is who you call, who they call the white man. He's not a white, but who you call the white man. All right? The Euro Gentile, some say, or the Edomite, some say, or Japheth, some say, whatever. When you're done talking, your main oppressor is this so called white man where we at right now. You understand? In the in the hells of Babylon. Notice it says, don't be jealous over him, right? And don't choose none of his ways. It didn't say some, it said none. We're not supposed to be trying to imitate and mimic our enemies or our oppressors. We're not. We're not. I know that's a kind of a hard pill to swallow for some, but it's the truth. And trip off this, us mimicking them, what has it ever got us? What has it ever got us? What benefit has we, like, what have we profited mimicking our oppressors? Verse 32, what does it say, Hop? Verse 32, mm -hmm. for the forward, for the forward is abomination to yod hey wah mm -hmm. but it's secret is in the right it's with the righteous now trip off this the forward now if you someone that envies your oppressor and you choosing his ways the most i just called you forward all right the hebrew word for that is lust not lust y'all or love Jerome's age 3868 lose oh lose my bad lose. lose all right now trip off this right here forward right the most i say the forward is an abomination forward depart perverse perverseness to depart turn aside to depart to go wrong to be lost. go crooked devious perverse to be lost from view to become devious if you choose your oppressor's ways you are lost you're crooked you are wrong devious. you're lost from view you're devious you've departed you're perverse you've departed from the true and living path strong's definition lose a primitive route to turn aside, illustrate the example, literally to depart, figuratively be perverse, depart, forward, uh, perverseness. Y'all see that? So if you are forward, if you someone that's in the business of choosing your oppressor's ways in the eyes of the almighty, you are forward. And notice what he said. Forward is an abomination. What does abomination mean? Just so y'all can kind of get a, a feel on why you're not supposed to be doing this. For the forward, those that are perverse, those that are crooked, those that are lost because they're choosing the ways of their oppressor. The word is to'ava, to'ava, right? Abomination, abominable. True about this. Disgusting. In the eyes of the Most High, we are disgusting if we out there mimicking them right now. And y'all, this is just one of the high appointed times. We're not supposed to be doing none of the stuff they do. None of it. If it had anything to, do, anything to do with worship or being festive, any type of ceremony, your best bet is to stay away from it. If, if you learned it from some heathens, it's time to get away from it. You understand? Because our instructions is in the Holy Manuscript. And I would say a disgusting thing, abomination, abominable, in ritual sense, unclean foods, idols, trip up this, mixed marriages. You know, a lot of y'all, you know, get kind of, you know, caught up, <laughs> get kind of mad about that. But we are supposed to raise our children to be with their own. All right. You ain't supposed to raise them saying, well, you know, just basically do what you like. And nobody say mixed marriages. And the Hebrew word is what? Hebrew word is to a ba. To a ba when you learn to read Hebrew. And one of the definitions says mixed marriages. What I've been on. Mixed marriages. I'm you, for of unclean food, idols, and mixed marriages. Yep, in ethical sense, wickedness, right? To a ba, a feminine act of participle of 8581, properly something disgusting. Wow. Morally, i.e., as noun and abhorrent, especially idolatry or concretely an idol, abominable, custom thing, abomination. You see, we oppose the rays. Our children and the aim is what to stick with your own. It wouldn't be all these scriptures in the Bible of telling you don't be doing that. Nehemiah wouldn't have been beating cats down for doing that. 
That's right. Phoenix wouldn't have wouldn't have got an everlasting priesthood for raising up and putting somebody down for it. You understand? Ezra too. Yes, Ezra, you dig? Tobit 412. Don't be committing whoredom. See, all these things you learn from your oppressors. You wanted to be like them. You want to be like Jack Johnson, the boxer. Because he was slaying white women all over this boy. He wasn't playing. That was his preference. His milk of magnesia. But I think y'all get where I'm going with this. All right. One of the ways of the oppressors was going on tonight, but there's many things that we have learned from our oppressors that we are not to be doing. All right. We are not to be doing these things. All right. Uh, another scripture I want to go to real quick is just Jeremiah the 10th chapter. Just real quick. And then I want to hear something else in Jeremiah as well about uh, our true independence day. And then let's get into it. Let's get into this article. I know y'all heard about that earthquake that hit Cali today. Huh? You see, I know y'all heard about that. The worst one in 20 years. And the worst is yet to come. I heard groups saying they even wearing cologne and perfume from the other nations coming as envy and the oppressor. Yeah, man, I'd rather, it, it, like speaking as your brother, a 12 tribes athlete, I wear oils like frankincense. I don't wear cologne. I wear oils. You know what I'm saying? Frankincense straight from the Holy Land. That's what I do. You dig? I really ain't into all the perfume and the, you know what I'm saying, the colognes and all that. You dig? But hey, me, it's what it is. All right, Jeremiah the 10th chapter. Uh, Nakamiya, what we got? Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1. Hear ye. Hear ye. Read that again. Mm -hmm. Hear ye the word which the Most High spake unto you, mm -hmm. O house of Israel. O house of Israel, that's us. Hear ye the word that the Most High speaks unto you, O house of Israel. Read that verse one again, little brother, just getting there. Ten and one, what does it say? Hear ye mm -hmm. the word which the Most High speaketh unto you, uh, O house of Israel. So we are the children of Israel. This, this whole Bible is for us, okay? Inspired by the God or power of Israel through the prophets of Israel, to the people of Israel, and even in these last days, it still applies. Okay? Now trip off this. So this is specifically to you, O house of Israel. Come on, hot. Thus said, yo, hey, why? Learn not the way of the heathen. Learn not the way of the heathen. So young man, if, if I told you learn not something, what that mean? Learn not. Yeah, not to learn it. Don't, Don't do, do it. it. So the Most High, the, the God of the Bible was telling us as the children of Israel, don't learn the way of the heathens. The heathens or the other nations. The main heathen you know today is like the so-called white man, the Palestinians that run the store right here, the Arabs that be at the store. Those are, all those are heathens. The Chinese that be at the Chinese rice shop and all that, those are heathens. We are not to learn their cultures, their ways, their worships, none of it. All right? So it says, learn not the way of the heathen. Come on out. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Right. For the heathen are dismayed at them. Oh, you know, dismayed is somebody that, that loses courage real quick. You feel me? They into they real heavy into their horoscopes. You understand? Like our people had knowledge of the stars, but you understand you don't worship stars and all that. We had knowledge of them. We understand the stars line up. They was because the stars were giving us as signals and signs from the most high. About the seasons we are in, the stars, the sun, and the moon. Actually, the seasons we are in, when the when the sow seed, when the harvest seed. You understand? Blood moons let you know we're in the age or eons of judgment. You understand? Like so, we got knowledge of the heavens, but but it's not to surpass that and start getting into all the horoscopes and the. You understand? You plan your whole life around what you've read in some type of horoscope. The heathens are dismayed at them. All right. Come on, Hebrew, verse three. For the customs of the people are vain. For the customs of the people are vain. The, the, the customs of heathens are worthless. It's superstition at the best, which is, a, which is a really a cheap form of witchcraft when you get down to it. Superstition is just a watered down version of witchcraft. The customs of the people are vain. What heathens do, what we are not to learn as Israelites, is because what they doing is worthless. It means nothing. Right, it ain't got you one stripe, one brownie stripe for with the most high and getting into the kingdom. You actually been spinning your wheels in the mud this whole time. 
You feel me? And making yourself an enemy of the Most High. At the same time. At the same time. All right, come on now. For one cut of the tree out of the forest. Uh-huh. The work of the hands of the workmen with an axe. In my day, they actually did that. We actually had real Christmas trees. They actually go and get a real one. Today, you can go to Walmart and get you a makeshift Christmas tree or whatever. But this custom of bringing pine trees into your house it goes back before the Messiah was even born. You understand? Trees are looked at as altars as well. Tree worship actually go back to the Garden of Eden. You feel me? All these trees you can, you know, but that one right there, you better stay away from. And it was one that was desirable, one that make you wise. They partook and look at what we've been in ever since. Tree worship actually goes back to the garden, but the other nations after the flood adopted it. You understand? Uh, you saw it in Game of and Thrones, that, and, that, too. and that's just what it is. You said what? You saw it in Game of Thrones, too, that big old tree. Yeah. That last battle with the, you know, the yeah. walk. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about that. All right, so they customs of vain. They chopped down a tree with an axe. Okay, come on, verse four. They deck it with silver and with gold. Young man, what kind of tree do you bring into your house and you put silver and gold on? What that sound like to you? A Christmas tree. Right in the Bible, the, the God of the Bible telling us don't do that. Long before Christ was even born. Learn not. Do not learn what these heathens are doing because these are rituals to their gods. And to this day, our people do what? They bring a tree into their house and they deck it with what? Silver and gold. The song you used to do and that. ornaments and all that. They call it, there's a song called Silver and Gold. You always used to sing that. <laughs> yeah, it's called Silver and Gold. You know what I'm saying? All you gotta do is look it up. But it's wild how you know what I'm saying these uh things are were in the scripture already, and that we as the children of the most high actually learned this, even though we were told not to learn it. And then the people in the churches ain't even teaching us this. You understand? They deck it with silver and gold. Come on up. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammer. Uh-huh. That it move not. In my day, we used to put like a weight. At the bottom of it, if it was, you know what I'm saying? Because it, you got the stand and you got the tree. If that sucker was unbalanced, you just have to have to balance it out. We'll get like a 25 pound weight and put it on this side right here to make sure it was stationary that it wouldn't fall over. You understand? So that's a that's the custom of a Christmas tree. You understand? Which is nothing but an altar. Because at every uh, altar, you bring gifts. And aren't there gifts at the bottom of it? What you got to do to get that gift? To bow down to it. You got to duck your head and grab the gift. You don't even know. You're you bowing to it. Sit you know what I'm saying? It, yeah. And you're being spiritually sacrificed. And thankful at the same time. And behind it is sexual perversion behind it too. But that's a whole other story, man. Saturnalia. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole wicked spirit that come along with it. You understand? So we just read in two instances how we are not to learn the way of heathens. You understand? Don't envy your oppressor. Don't choose none of his ways. None of us should be of lusting to be like the Chinese. Some brothers be out here, they call it the I Ching. They learn, they look up Chinese philosophy and Confucianism and all that. You're lusting to be like heathens, you understand? Some people getting, some brothers think they are uh, Arabic. They actually be trying to speak Arabic too, like the Arabs. Think they Shiite and Sunni Muslims. They don't like you. You feel me? Making Salat and keeping Ramadan and all that, you still are envying your oppressor, choosing his ways. You know, a lot of Negroes still riding high on the hog and eating hog in the Christian church. You understand? Got that Martin Luther King spirit on him. You still envying your oppressor and choosing his ways. Images of a, a white angels, white Jesus, angels with huggies on, pampers. Nah, you still envying your oppressor, even when you get down to doing his holidays. The Most High in the Bible has his holy days that we're supposed to do. And all of them have spiritual significance to them. Right? You can ask us, well, why do y'all keep the Passover? And we can go right to the scripture and show you. But then you ask somebody, well, why do we do Christmas according to the Bible? There's no answer. And if there's no answer, then guess what? We've been spinning our wheels, you understand, and becoming an enemy at the same time of the Most High. So we're not supposed to be doing it. I'm glad this little brother popped up here. And I'm glad you did too, Hebrew. You ain't, I ain't seen you in, in a few weeks. But that's what's up. But my heart rejoiced when that little Hebrew walked through the door. You know what I'm saying? Looked up. Oh, okay, he up in there. Because the his homeboy's in my side right now. He popped on in. You feel me? So he can learn what time it is. All praises. Hallelujah. Okay. All right, y'all. Let's go to um real quick. Let's read about our uh, Independence Day that's coming. Let's, read, let's go to Jeremiah, the 16th chapter. True independence is coming, y'all. True independence is coming. All right. 
Oh yeah, for sure. Research that were yeah, yeah, yeah. Christ Mass means mean death, Christ. You know, some people don't like that phrase, but you know, if you just looked at it for what it was, uh Christ mean anointed, you know what I'm saying? Mass mean death, so death of the anointed. You know what I'm saying? But again. I hope the best thing to do is just to stay away from it. You feel me? Stay away from it. Stop doing what these heathens are doing. That's what we need to be doing. All right? Do what the most high calls you to do. It's more powerful. It's more liberating. You feel me? It's less strenuous on your mind. You understand? I mean, you, you got the tools and the power to straight, uh, you know, wake your brothers and sisters out of their slumber. You understand? And reactivate that. Yah particle that's in them. All right, you were born with it. All right, so let's get this right. Here. Let's bring it to Jeremiah 16. We're gonna read about we're gonna read about our independence. This is when our independence is coming. And y'all, when we mean independence, we mean independent from our oppressors. All right, we'll never be independent from the Almighty ever. You understand? But the day is coming when we will rule this earth. Under our king, the son of the most high, you are meant to rule, you are royalty, you're not some third and second class citizen. You understand? You are royalty, you're chosen, you're above everybody that's even breathing oxygen. You understand? So it's time for us to practice this now. All right, practice it now. Yeah, that way, by the time it comes, you, you'll be ready. All right, Jeremiah, the 16th chapter, Jeremiah's 16th chapter, let's read 14 and 15. Hallelujah. May everybody that's listening, listening to this live chat, may you be filled and sealed with the set apart spirit of the Most High, which is his mind, power, and essence. It's what we need in these last days. All right. Come on, Hebrew. Let's get it. Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 14. Yeah. Therefore, therefore, behold, therefore, behold, the days come, said Yo, hey, why? Uh -huh. It shall no more be said. Yo, hey, why, hey, lift that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But yo, hey, why, hey, lift that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands where he had been driven them. And I will bring them again into their land. And I will bring them again into their land. The most high time about gathering us through his son. That's what the return of the Messiah is all about. Gathering the lost sheep, you understand? That's independence. Yeah, right? that's when we gonna rejoice. That's when everybody gonna sit up under their own fig tree and go back to the land of their possession and inheritance. That's when you receive the power from on high. That's when you rule this earth, and that's when you become a light to the Gentiles. You understand? When you in your kingdom and your power and full glory, and the entire earth see how we all operate as this powerful messianic nation they ain't never seen before you understand that's when that's when it's about all right come on knock let's get it read verse 15 again but yo hey why hey living that brought up the children of israel from the land of the north mm -hmm. and from all the lands whither he had driven them yeah and i will bring them again into their land mm -hmm. That I gave it to their father. I right, dropped that real quick. I got one more. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. I just want to show something. I want to show something. All right, we're going to read Jeremiah 23. All right, and we're going to read 1 through 8. Jeremiah 23, 1 through 8. Y'all give me a Yahoo when y'all get there. All right, Jeremiah 23, since we talking Independence Day, the Negro doing out here, and we in Jennings, right outside Northside St. Louis, where it's majority Negroes, 98%. Right down the street from where Mike <laughs> Brown was killed. Right down the street from where Mike Brown was killed. You probably get a walk there. Who was the little IUICK brother? I can't remember his name. Yeah, the one IUIC bro was killed down on the north side, right over there by the Riverview Circle. Yep. yep, and our brother. I'm talking. What they was that was it within weeks of each other, days actually. 
And Thaddeus McKern, he was killed by the Jennings Police Department. That's one of our brothers. So what are you doing celebrating the 4th of July? What about Alton Sterling and Philando Castile? What was that two years ago? Sandra Bland, too. You know what I'm saying? They was actually celebrating the 4th of July, and they was murdered on July 5th and what, July 6th? Two days. And so how quick we forget. Guarantee you, not, not, they wouldn't give a rat about that. How did they have to get killed that way? Come on, man. Now, look, it ain't like how you complain about the uh, the oppressor, you feel me, but you enjoy the system. The entire system got to come down. The oppression is a byproduct of the system. And you're like, oh, no justice, no peace, but let me go shoot off a bottle rocket. You dig? You I thought you had a problem with the oppression. The oppression is a byproduct of the system, the same system that was in play that got you celebrating the 4th of July. You should be standing against all of it. It make you radical in the eyes of people. That, you know, people get mad. They be all right, though. So what? Imagine how much money so you would have in our neighborhood and our economy if we didn't pop none of that. Major. That's crazy. Like a lot if of you didn't do that tonight, you were outside. Yeah. And the length of time that it's being done, how much money was spent, and then the food's being cooked. Mm -hmm. And, you know, above and beyond your normal household measure. Imagine how much money they would have stored. How many daycares? How many schools would they would open? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Really how many tough. homeless would they have took care of? That's how far gone. That's why you know we ain't independent. Yeah, you can't be. You feel me? Most of, most of us went. You said what? Yeah, Walmart was off the chain. The crazy part about it is, man, the whole thing about it is that most of us was late on our mortgage and rent. See? Because See you want to go celebrate this. How how back was this? They put some bills on the back. You wouldn't even secure you wouldn't even secure living arrangements lie, before you went and did this. You understand? It makes no sense. It makes no sense no way, shape, form, or fashion. You feel me? And the, the smell of swine smoke had satiated the city earlier, man. It was ridiculous. Oh, yeah, I was on the phone with this Hebrew man. I said, man, I gotta close my I, I gotta close my door. Air. No, you I'll be outside in the morning time, you know, meditating, smelling the fresh air of the most high. Man, my next door neighbor's boy had all the hog on the grill. I'm like, oh no. Oh, let me close my door and turn the AC on. You understand? I can't I I did I, I, my baby. I bet not take this into my nostrils, boy. Oh no. Hey, look, and they all pray little, 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 jumping in this house and listen. You should heard of this baby, right? She's up to that. I be new. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. He right. goes, no, she said, Daddy, I be new. <laughs> yeah. Daddy, baby. Daddy, baby. She already know what time yeah. it is. She went right into prayer after that. I'm she, talking about, I'm talking, it's funny. She, I'm telling yeah. you, you had to beat her. I mean, I'm on the phone. I'm like, man, you said he's even over here tripping. Boy, they got this. Boy, they got the whole flame. Yeah. That boy closed him door. As soon as she closed the door, he said, Man, my baby's case, I be new. That little girl came <laughs> over, boy, and comforted her daddy. <laughs> I see you look perplexed, Abba. Abba, I be new. And she shows me. She my in. He got days. She got Tabo. Akute got. Yeah, I say. That's what she stopped at every time. And then he had to take over and leave. Mm -hmm. Real talk. Oh, crazy. That was, I, that was funny. Uh, yeah, I'll break. <laughs> All right, Jeremiah 23, y'all. True independence. Let's get it out. Woe be unto the pastors mm -hmm. <clears throat> that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor, say yo hey why. Hey. That's right. Come on. Therefore, thus says yo hey why hey, Elohim of Israel. Nobody said woe unto the pastors or woe unto the shepherds. You understand? That what? That destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. Woe unto you. Judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. All right. Therefore, does say the most high, the power of Israel. See, that's one of his many titles. He's the God of Israel. We can get emotional all day. Say he's the God of everybody. No. We got to deal with the scriptures without being emotional. We ain't say he ain't created everybody. He has. But on record, who is he the power of? Abraham, the, the power of Israel. When you done talk, it's the truth. People don't like the fact that you found out you was Israel. See, you'd have found out you Israel. Now it's like, oh no, that sounds racist. Controversy. It did, but we don't see we don't see him as the God of everybody. He's the, he's the power of Israel. Yeah, all nations gonna have to come and subject themselves when it's all said and done. You understand? And guess what? Guess who they're gonna be bowing to? Us. You did? They're gonna be bowing to us because that's the order from the God of Israel. He will be worshipped in this earth. The remnants of them other nations, they gonna, you know. That spurred the lake of fire, they gonna come and worship. 
You understand? But y'all get it out your mind as if it's a free will thing. I, I don't say something. You understand? Like if it's a free will thing or something, mm -hmm. like it's gonna be a democratic society. Like they're gonna have a right to vote if they're gonna serve him. No, these, these are terms of surrender. You dig? If you don't want that hot lake of fire, guess what? If you outside of the 12 tribes, you are going to be a slave to the children of Israel and their kingdom. And you need to be thanking the almighty that our kingdom is going to be ran according to his laws. Because what everybody's scared of is we're going to act like the clan did to us. That's what they're afraid of. You understand? Like we're just going to get drunk off some whiskey and go rape white women. Nah. No, nah, that ain't going to happen. Yuck. God forbid anyway. Yuck. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> no, nah, it's gonna be righteous dictatorship, but we're gonna run a tight ship though. Well, it's, called, my life. it's called a rod of iron for a reason. That's right. You understand? We're gonna rule this earth with a rod of iron. Anybody get out of line, they're gonna be getting judged. See, so get democracy out of your mind. Get like, okay, well, if I feel like worshiping the God of Israel, I will no. No, we're not negotiating her. True power is not negotiated with. It's not. You understand? It's absolute rulership and authority. You feel me? And as long as they stay in box and in order, you understand? There will be mercy. If not, you won't even see the sun. That's just what it is, y'all. All right, come on, Hebrew. Let's get it. Verse 2 again. Mm -hmm. Therefore, thus said Yohei Wahei, mm -hmm. Elohim of Israel, mm -hmm. against the pastors that be my people, ye have scattered my flock. Yeah. And driven them away, uh -huh. and have not visited them. Uh -huh. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing. Come on, says Yoda. Why, yeah, so our, our power, our creator, is gonna avenge us or revenge the blood of his servants that have been shed. And see, that's what a lot of people want too. They don't, they not only don't want you to rule. They want our power and our creator to forget about what has happened to us. They give him a free pass. And he said, no, nah, I'll never forget that. Judgment is in the earth on account of us. So it behoove us to get ourselves together, man. Stop playing with this. Stop. You know what I'm saying? Do what's right. So when the most high bring judgment to this earth, you good. Uh, all right. I was on Papa Good side, right? Come on, Hebrew. Let's get it. Verse three. Yeah. And I. And I will gather the remnant of my flock mm -hmm. out of all countries whether I have driven them. See, it was, the, it was the most high behind all of it when you're done talking anyway. You understand? The problem is they overstep their boundaries. I tell you that in Zechariah, the first chapter, the 14th verse. I'm, I'm greatly offended or displeased at the heathens that are at, that are at ease. Any heathen in this hour that's at ease, like, they ain't got no smoke coming from the most high. Sadly mistaken. He said he just was a little mad at what we did against him. And they helped forward the affliction. You know I'm they went over and beyond. They tried to wipe Israel out of our memory. They tried to straight overthrow prophecy by getting at us. That's why the most high say I'm coming to get, I'm coming to hit y'all top behind it. You feel me? I scattered my people because they went against me. So now the time is coming when he's going to gather us. You no, know, he said the remnant. I mean, y'all, everybody ain't going to get this. I know we want all our families to get it, but everybody ain't going to get it. He's only gathering the remnant of his people. Small remaining residue out of all countries where he had driven us, right? And then he's going to bring what? What else to say? And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries uh -huh. where I have driven them. Come on. And will bring them again to their foes. Uh -huh. And they shall be fruitful and increase wow we're going so we're going to be fruitful and increasing y'all that that ain't just you know in riches y'all know that's also in having children we gotta look we gotta fill this earth with fruit this entire earth with righteous children raised up under the righteous vibration of the almighty yeah that's part of it baby making is in the plans too <laughs> you men and women get ready baby makings is in the plan Seven and one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All, all praises. Come on, Doc. Let's get it. And I will set up shepherds uh -huh. over them, mm -hmm. which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more. Yeah. Nor be dismayed. Come on. Neither shall they be lacking. Come on. Says Yo Hey Why. You see? So we're gonna set up shepherds, true pastors or shepherds that's gonna be sincere. That's gonna feed his flock. Not fleece them, not pimp them, not get over. Sincerely care about you. You understand? Not look at you as a dollar sign. 
I sincerely care about you. Sincerely a be there for you. If you hurt, I'm hurt. You need prayer, let's pray. You understand? To guide you, to talk to you, to make you laugh when you're sad or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Tell you when you're going off too. Like, hey, no, nah, you should have did that. You understand? Because that's what true shepherds do. They guard the lives of the sheep. You understand? And even a kill for the sheep if they got to. Lay their life down for the sheep if they got to. I leave 99 found sheep to go find one lost sheep. That's what shepherds do. Right? All right, come on, Ock. Let's get it. Verse 5. Remember, we talking about real independence, right? Come on, Ock. Verse 5. Yeah. Behold, the days come, it said, yo, hey, why? Yeah. And I will raise up David. I will raise. Unto David. Come on. A righteous brain. Yeah, you got to get that right because the non-messianics, boy, keep, yeah, keep that one. They keep saying, you know, it's David. But who is it says unto David, a righteous branch? Huh? This branch means descendant. He's gonna be a descendant of David, but it's not David himself. Now trip off this. Jeremiah the prophet lived a couple hundred years after David had already been dead. So who is this righteous branch that will be raised up? It couldn't be David. David. It's not David. He Jeremiah's not giving a history lesson. David, especially if David had already lived and died. Well, who are we talking about? Raised unto David a righteous branch, right? I ain't lying to Judah. Yep, let's read that, that definition for branches so y'all don't think I'm playing around. Amen. You Small making that up? 6780. Zemach. Hmm? Zemach. Zemach. Zemach, right? Now trip off this. I don't like the way he can speak Hebrew. All right, uh, branch, bud, branch, that which grew, spring, spring, and grew. I sure about this sprout growth branch sprout and growth sprout growth C sprout shoot of Messiah from Davidic tree. Y'all see that? A Messiah from a Davidic tree. That big just in case the naysayers are looking. All right. That's what he's talking about raising unto David a Messiah from Davidic tree mean the David's family tree. He comes from his lineage. He's a descendant of David. All right. And the prophecy say it. Okay. I raised unto David a righteous branch. What else to say? I and a king shall reign and prosper. Kenneth Ratcliffe, this place ain't for you. Keep it pushing. It is some other Messiah. All right. And a king shall what? And a king shall reign and prosper. Shall what? Execute judgment uh -huh. and justice in the earth. That's All right. Praise. That's right. So that's what, that's what a true king going to do. He's going to reign. He's going to prosper. And he's going to execute judgment that's and right. justice in this earth. Yeah, jumping against him. Yeah. Verse <laughs> six. Praise. What did he say, Hebrew? Verse six. Mm -hmm. In the days of Yahuda uh -huh. shall be saved. In his days. In his days, Judah or Yahuda shall be saved. Okay, come on, Ock. And Israel shall dwell safe. Uh huh. And this is his name. Hold on, here. That's how you know. You understand? It's talking about a descendant of David, right? And not, and, and it's a man. And this is his name. Come on. Whereby he shall be called. Come on. Yo, hey, why, hey, our righteousness. Yep, ZK knew our righteousness. So this man that will be descending from David holds the title of the Lord, all capital, all righteousness. So before the guy got thrown here along off the chat, what son of David can hold the title, the Lord, our righteousness? If it ain't the Messiah in the New Testament. It's Solomon gone too. And it said, and look, this ain't the most high himself. This is the most high prophesying through the mouth of Jeremiah that, look, I'm going to raise under David a righteous branch. It ain't Jeremiah saying he's going to do it. It's the spirit of the almighty prophesying through his prophet Jeremiah that somebody is coming in David's family line. Right. He's going to be a king. He's going he's going to prosper. He's going to reign. He's going to execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days, Judah and Israel, all 12 tribes going to be saved. This is what the return of the Messiah is about, right? And guess what? We're going to dwell safely. Is Israel dwelling safely right now over in the land? No, it's turmoil in the land. That's how you know they are not the people. Because if they were the people, the Messiah should have delivered them back there. And they should be dwelling safely. Period. Simple math. Why aren't they dwelling safely? 
because they're not the people all right and guess what his name gonna be called or his authority the lord our righteousness wow verse seven and eight what it say I verse seven mm -hmm. therefore behold mm -hmm. the days come saith yo a y a mm -hmm. that they shall no more say yo a y a liveth which brought up the children of israel out of the land of egypt mm -hmm. but yo a y a liveth which brought up and which led the seed the children come on of the house uh -huh. of Israel, come on, out of the north country, out of where the north country. I mean, it, yeah, we could call it a coincidence. We in North America, but that's a whole nother topic. But you are in North America, aren't you? Okay, well, out of the north country, where else? And from all countries whither I had driven them, uh huh. And they shall dwell in their own land. That's when our Independence Day is. How are you doing Independence Day in the land of your captivity? How are you keeping Independence Day in the land of y'all captivity? Y'all understand that our independence comes when the, when the Messiah returns and we're gathered into the land. If y'all understand that, throw a seven up in the chat. Throw a seven up in the chat. All right, next we're going to read this, this article today about these earthquakes before we get into this uh. This ascension of and this martyrdom and ascension of Isaiah. Yes, Isaiah was martyred. You understand? And he ascended. He saw visions of the coming Messiah. All right, look like everybody see. And I propose right now, y'all, the, the most high is putting that spirit. That's why brothers in their mind getting up, ready to go travel, ready to go visit the land. You understand? Ready to move about in this earth and you know, do the works of the Messiah in this earth. You know, that, that spirit is out here now. People forsaking all. Just out here on faith. Like, look, I'm out of here. Let's go do something. Boy, moving ain't good. That's what time it is, y'all. That spirit is rising up. So much happened today. Somebody else said uh, these earthquakes was felt in Nevada as well. You understand? A lot of stuff was going on today. This so so called fourth of your life. The Most High is not playing no games at all, y'all. At all. Okay. Well, now this article is from uh, CBSNews.com. All right, so this is very credible. Earthquake, California today, Ridgecrest strikes near Los Angeles. Wow. 2019. All right, July 4th, 7-4, 2019, live updates. All right, 6.4 magnitude earthquake strikes South Southern California. All right, let's read it. Make it a little bigger so y'all can see. Let's see what's going on here. We're going to grab uh, Isaiah 29 and, and 6. Isaiah 29, uh, 4 through 6 after this. All right. All right, Isaiah 20. I mean, Isaiah 29. It's the article. A 6.4 magnitude earthquake rattled Southern California on Thursday. That's the day, y'all. An official said it was the largest to hit the region in 20 years. Huh? You, you still thinking this is ironic or this is a coincidence? Why, why everybody out there being riotous and rebellious, earthquakes were going off today. And this earthquake, and this it was plenty of tremors and aftershocks, and also that this earthquake was felt in Nevada. Wow. All right. They said it was the largest to hit the region in 20 years. You go back to what, 1999? Dang. That was before you was born, young man. All right. The quake struck near the city of Ridgecrest, which is located about 160 miles northeast of Los Angeles. Some injuries were reported in Ridgecrest, authorities said, but the extent is currently unclear. A city in the, a city in the hospital was evacuated. Wow. A city in the hospital was evacuated. And officials are assessing structural damage to the building. The United States Geological Survey, I need to look that up, too, because it showed you about 100 earthquakes hit every day. You know, a lot of stuff you just don't hear about, but the, U, the U.S. Geological Survey record earthquakes all the time. The United States Geographical or Geological Survey said the quake struck at 10.33 a.m. Pacific time. And that was a little bit after noon Central time. The earthquake was initially given a magnitude of 6.6, .6, but was later revised to 6.4. The quake was felt more than 150 miles away in Los Angeles, but no damage was reported. This was the largest quake to hit Southern California since 1999 and an eerie reminder of the 1994 North Ridge quake. The magnitude 6.6 .6 earthquake killed at least 57 people and caused billions of dollars in damage. All right. The city of Los Angeles has lowered the threshold on this earthquake app following public outcry, 
CBS Los Angeles reported residents were not alerted to the quake Thursday via Shake Alert LA because it only registered a match to a 4.5 in Los Angeles County. We hear you and will lower the alert threshold with USGS Shake Alert, the city of Los Angeles tweeted. The city of Los Angeles announced it will be working with the US Geological Survey on the update to its app. State of emergency declared. State of emergency has been issued for Ridge Quest by local officials. California Governor Gavin Newsom also declared a state of emergency for Kern County, where Ridge Quest is located. The declaration allows the state to help the region with emergency aid and recovery efforts. Ridge Crest Mayor Peggy Breeden praised Newsom's decision. She also noted at a news conference that other nearby governments have offered to help recovery efforts. All right. Injuries reported. There were some injuries, but authorities are not saying to what extent right now. No deaths were reported. And the hospital in Ridgecrest is not dealing with any earthquake related injuries. They did evacuate patients who need to assess structural and other damage. Uh, cracks form and rose from earthquake. Look at them cracks. Y'all, these are just the beginning. These are just warnings. Warning shots. Large cracks opened up in roadways between Trona and Ridgecrest where a magnitude earthquake struck on Thursday. Y'all, this is just the beginning. It's just the beginning. It almost gave me a heart attack. A heart attack. A waitress at Midway Cafe in Ridgecrest says she was so startled by the quake, it almost gave her a heart attack. It's just a rolling feeling inside the building, inside the cafe, and all of a sudden everything started falling off the shelf. Glasses, the refrigerator, and everything in the small refrigerator fell over, Cora Burke told the Associated Press. Video shows restaurant hit by earthquake, the damage. All right, so y'all can read the rest of that when y'all get a time. We're going to read a few scriptures about earthquakes. Uh, Isaiah 29 real quick, and then we're going to read Matthew 24. Let's get into this, what we call the martyrdom and ascension of Isaiah. All right. All right, give me Isaiah 29. Let's read verse four through six. You dig? Y'all do, do not pay to go against the Almighty. And when you read some of this stuff, a lot of this stuff had to do with Israel when we were in our land. A trip off this. Your oppressors is committing the same crimes. What you think the most I got for them? If he got at us. Uh, Major League smoke. Florida had wildfires, iguanas, and flesh-eating bacteria. And a few weeks back, an alligator broke into someone's house. They also had a lot of die off too in the water. See, I heard about that. I, that die off. Yeah, a lot of probably fish kills and all that. All right. So, hey, now it's the time for us to stay more and more focused on what we're supposed to be doing, y'all. Stop playing with the Almighty. Become obedient. All right. All right, let's get it. I, I said 29, let's read four through six real quick. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 4. Yeah. And thou shalt be brought down and shall speak out of the ground. And they speech. And shall, thy speech. And thy speech, thank you. And thy speech shall be low out of the dust. And thy voice shall be as of one that had a familiar spirit. Or a demon. Mm, come on. Out of the ground. And thy speech shall whisper out of the dust. You talking about low running, being brought low. Come on. Moreover, the multitude of thy strangers shall be like small dust, mm. and the multitude of the terrible one, terrible ones shall be as chaff that passes away. Yeah, it shall be an instant. It shall sudden. be at an instant, at an instant suddenly, suddenly, meaning when the most high strike, strike. Right, if you ain't paying attention and if you're not being obedient, you dig, he gonna catch you sleeping with your shoes off, ready to snooze off. You understand? Stop playing with him. This is why, verse six. Thou shalt be visited of the most high of hosts uh -huh. with sun. With what? With sun. Come on. With earthquake. Come on. In great noise. Uh huh. With storm and tempest. Uh huh. And flame of devouring fire. See, come on, let's get seven and eight. And the multitude of all the nations that fight against Ariel. Yeah, Ariel is another name for Israel. Another name for Jerusalem. All right. That's another name. So he's he talking about all the nations that came against the Most High's people. 
not just the city, his people. All right, come on, not against Ariel. Even all that fight against her uh -huh. and her uh, munition and that distressed her shall be as a dream of a night vision. shall be as a dream of a night vision you understand Shall be as a dream right I mean, in other words these heathens actually think they got one up over on us they actually don't they actually don't it seem right now like we disadvantaged you see him at now like we got them but they know better this is why come on verse eight mm -hmm. it shall even be as when as hungry man dreaming uh -huh. and behold uh -huh. he eat it come on but he awake uh -huh. And his soul is empty. It's vain for them to even fight against us as a people. You understand? It's vain. What good is a hungry man having a dream about eating something? He wake up and still he hungry. What good did that dream serve you? It didn't. You feel me? So he's comparing that to the nations that's fighting against us. To a hungry man that's in his dream, he eating good, but he wake up and he's still hungry. What was the point? There was no point. What did it profit y'all for even trying to get at the most highest people and divvy up their land? You feel me? It didn't profit you anything. It actually cost you dearly. All right, come on, Ock, let's get it. Or as when a thirsty man dreaming, mm -hmm. and behold, he drinketh, mm -hmm. but he awaketh, and behold, <laughs> he is faint. He's still thirsty. What good is that? You thirsty, you drinking, you drinking Gatorade, quenching your thirst, and you wake up and your mouth tastes like sandpaper. Come on, Ock. And his soul has appetite. So shall the multitude of all the nations be that fight against Mount Zion. Flat out. All the nations that fight against us. Us and our land. You feel me? It ain't going to profit them none. It's actually going to destroy them. You see? It's actually going to destroy them. Give me uh, Isaiah 24 real quick. 24. Isaiah 24. Give me Isaiah 24 just real quick. Uh, I need Isaiah 24. One through six. Show y'all why all these things are happening in the earth. And no, the Negro should not be outside right now popping fireworks for the fourth of your life. All right. You should not be doing that. You're making yourself an enemy of the Almighty. And we're not here to water none, none of this down. Some some so-called teachers who call themselves teaching and probably tell y'all it's okay. It's this nation's independence day. You know, it's technically it's not pagan. Look, stop it. We just read envy not your oppressor and stop choosing his ways. And here come the Negro that got in his shoes. Oh, but you watch sports though. You see? Yeah, I got all this extra stuff to try to hold on to your oppressor instead of saying, you know what, let me get away from it. I'm about level up and let the sports go. Yeah. Ain't no problem I mean, that. that's what it is. But when we put it out there like that, you know, the same cat that say it, oh yeah, I mean, I was just playing. I know you playing. You understand? Because the fact of the matter is, some of us used to play sports. You understand? And the desire for it then left so much is ridiculous. I used to, when I grew up, why it wasn't a football game I used to miss. Now I can't even tell you. When the last time I sat through one, I can't even sit down and watch it too long. You feel me? So again, the whole thing is coming about a Babylon, period. Let it go. You understand? But what you're going to find is people going to come up with some type of excuse on why. They hold on to it. Yeah. Yeah. Hearts are gross. All right. Come on, Hebrew. Let's get it. Isaiah 24. We're going to read one through six. Isaiah 24, verse one. Yeah. Behold, yo, hey, why, hey, make it the earth empty uh. and make it that waste Ooh. and turn it upside down. Come on. And understand and scatter it. Abroad, the inhabitants thereof. It's the most high to bring the plagues, y'all. See what he said? He make the earth empty, lay it waste. Then they say, turn it upside down. Some, if you do a little bit of research, some of them tell you even the north and southern poles are flipping out. But hey, that's a whole nother story. But those just said, turn it upside down. <laughs> and he scattered from abroad the inhabitants. Come on, knock, let's get it. And it shall be with the people. So the so with the priest, and it shall be as with the people, so with the priest. Come on, as with the servant, so with his master. Come on, as with the maid, uh -huh. so with the mistress. Come on, as with the buyer. Come on, so with the seller. Come on, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, 
So with the giver of you, so we're just saying, but no matter what position you play in this earth, when the most high send his plagues, everybody's affected by it. It don't matter if you're rich or poor, bond or free, you know what I'm saying? Maid, mistress, whatever you're talking about. It did when the most high play with the elements, it did when he started hitting this earth with plagues, everyone's affected by it. Everybody did come on, hey, bro, let's get it. The land shall be utterly empty. The, the land should last. The land. The land mm -hmm. shall be utterly empty mm -hmm. and utterly spoiled. For Yahweh has spoken he's, this word. He said the land is going. The land or the earth is going to be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled. Utterly emptied and utterly spoiled mm -hmm. for the most high spoken. The first four. Let's get it. The earth mourned mm -hmm. and faded away. Mm -hmm. The world languishes. And faded the way the haughty people of the earth do like yeah so the, the haughty are the people that are proud that are riding on the proverbial high hog the rules of the earth the powers that be the language mean losing strength weak you see so when he said the last shall be first the signs and and wonders and things of that nature are going to start happening in the earth on a, a more consistent basis before power is exchanged you understand before power is transferred, should I say? I right, go ahead. I right, verse five. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, mm -hmm. because they have transgressed the law. Because what? They have transgressed the law. The earth is defiled under the inhabitants because they transgressed the laws. Now, what good is land if you're not upholding the law and the gospels of the Most High, the law and the prophets? What good is the land? You gonna that kingdom? You gonna be able to fall them all? You understand? The land is no good without the people on it upholding the law they created. So it says the earth is also defiled because the inhabitants, because they have broken his laws. All right, and y'all, that starts with us. The reason everything is in a disarray is because we dropped the ball. All right, and now our animal is ruling this earth. Come on, now. change the ordinance. Broken the everlasting covenant. Mm, that's that. That got to do with us. Come on. Therefore, uh -huh. have the curse devoured the Therefore, earth. Therefore, have the curse devoured the earth. Come on. And they that dwell therein are desolate. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned. Wow. And few men left. Curse has devoured the earth. Y'all, y'all see that? Because the, the stewards of the Most High's word fumbled and dropped it. You see where everything is at today in a disarray. Y'all, this is a nightmare. This is what's called a, a straight up and down nightmare. And you know, something that we should never want to see ever again. All right. Let's jump on down to verse 18 in that. Jump down to 18. And we're going to read on down to 23. No, we'll jump down to 16. My bad. 15. Fourteen. <laughs> Go to fourteen. Isaiah twenty-four and fourteen. Verse fourteen. They shall lift up their voice. They shall sing for the majesty of Yod Hey Wahe. They shall cry aloud from the sea. That's right. Come on. Wherefore glorify ye Yod Hey Wahe in the fight. Mm. Even the name of Yod Hey Wahe Elohim of Israel. In the aisles of the sea, yeah, they say glorify him in the fires. So it's basically, when you see the destruction, you're supposed to be thankful, not saying, "Dang, that's messed up." Look what the devil doing to them. Uh, that's the Most High to send the plagues, y'all. You understand? It's a glorify the Most High. When you see his judgment in the earth, you're supposed to be saying, "Hallelujah." I mean, that is if you're on his side. You know, some people ain't on his side. If you are on his side, you need to be rejoicing and praising when you see his judgment in the earth. All right, come on, Hebrew. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. For the uttermost part of the earth have we uh have we heard songs, even glory to the righteous. But I said, my leaning, my, my leanness, my leanness, woe unto me. The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Wow, you see, ill dealing on this earth. Only defiles the earth. You know what I'm saying? We probably be dealing in equity, fruit of the spirit, righteousness, being sincere. 
You feel me? Sincere love and all that, man. Not trying to get over and, and, and hustle and all that extra stuff. We supposed to be dealing sincerely with one another and the fruits of the spirit. You know what I'm saying? Not dealing treacherously. Because dealing treacherously, unjust weights and balances, all that, you understand? Most I hate that. He he commands from us a high level of morale. He commands it. But we have to act like that. We got to hold ourselves to a high level of righteousness. Have to. All right, come on, Nock, let's get it. The treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherous. Mm -hmm. Fear and the pit <laughs> and the snare are upon Z, mm. O inhabitant of the earth. Yeah, you feel me? And all the so-called nigga jokes is off the tape off the table in them time. When you when you start seeing mile wide tornadoes, when you start when you feel that uh, earth wide worldwide earthquake that's coming in the book of Revelations, when seven thousand people die. You feel me from one earthquake? That's an earthquake that's prophesied to hit this earth. It's in Revelation. It's like 7,000 people die. That's a worldwide earthquake. Most high is going to shake the earth. You dig? That said, fear in the pit and the snare. Snare is a trap. Or upon thee, O inhabitants of the earth. Why? Why though? Because the most high just want to do it. Why? We done went against his covenant. Transgressed alone. We transgressed everything, and now we out here doing whatever we want to do, and we can care less. You did. You can't even tell them they grow nothing anymore, man. All right, you got something, sister? No, I had a. Uh, like two thousand fourteen, mm -hmm. and I had a dream. I don't know why I was in California, but I was living on rocks. The house on rocks, you know. The one they built on the rocks, cliffs. Yeah, yeah, like. Hollywood Hills, whatever they call it. Yeah. And the earth shook. Like, it's like whatever had happened, it wasn't just an earthquake in California. It was like the whole world felt this. And actually, the earth shook. I felt in my knees. Mm. And it's like so much stuff going on now, starting from California. Like, yeah. Between the fires and the earthquakes, everything triggers from over there. Yeah, it is happening. Paradise, California got burned down. Was that last year? Earlier this year? That volcano in Hawaii, it, I'm telling you, that was a river of lava flowing. I kept thinking, Lake of Fire. Lake of Fire. People out there just taking pictures. I'm like, y'all have no idea how serious this is. Mexico, down in Mexico, Guadalajara. You understand? This had an ice storm a couple days ago. Didn't it, man? 77 degrees. Ice storm in buried the summertime. Everything. Buried everything. It was like four feet of ice, wasn't it? Something yeah, like that. bro. Buried everything. In Guadalajara, Shout Mexico, a few days ago. Straight the whole up. city was buried in ice. Straight up, bro. And you mean to tell me we ain't in these last days? That blew my mind. In the summertime, y'all. It wasn't cold. <laughs> it wasn't cold. It was like 72 degrees. I remember that. Yeah. That's the second time the last uh, time that the Hawaii Good job. Uh, volcanoes was happening. Somewhere out there, um, they had, they was covered in debris of um, like some kind of um, volcano eruption as well. They were buried like Pompeii. Yeah, yeah, like Pompeii just yeah. kicked off. Mm -hmm. And it was flooding in the Arabian Desert last year. Floods, water. You know what I'm saying? The, the desert don't get water. I'm saying, y'all, it's going down. If you just pay attention to step outside of your comfort zone, you'd be like, man, hey, Most High is making a move in the earth. You feel me? How about we be obedient? Let's finish this off and get this prayer off for the first hour in Jerusalem or in Israel. Verse 18. This is more than an incension of Isaiah. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that he who fled from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. Ah, so in other words, you ain't getting away from when the most I send judgment for thou. It's a rap for thou. There's nothing you can do. You can run all you want. All right? When judgment is set, it's over. All right, come on. Right. And he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare uh. for the whip windows from on high are open mm -hmm. and the fountains of the, the earth, foundations the foundations of the earth do shake what do you call it the foundation of the earth is shaking that's an earthquake y'all uh, yeah yeah now messiah said there should be earthquakes in diverse places in the last days look up u.s geological survey you can look up you can see on the earthquakes yesterday, today, last week, last month, last year, and blow your mind how many earthquakes go off every day. Feel me? Because the U.S. Geological Survey register. You understand? Yeah, some earthquakes you don't even hear about. 
but they register them. And that show you what the Messiah said in Matthew 24 is serious. It's a serious thing. You understand? It's happening. The foundations of the earth are shaking. Volcano. It was a volcano erupted last week, too. I think Indonesia, I believe. Shot up thousands of feet into the earth. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Hebrew. Verse 19. Hmm. Verse 19. The earth is utterly broken down and the earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunk. Like a what? Drunkard. So if the earth is reeling to and fro or staggering like a drunkard, y'all, it's shaking. You feel me? These earthquakes are going to be hitting more and more on a regular basis. Especially here in Missouri, we own the New Madrid fault. Cali is the San Andreas fault. You understand? It's, it's, it's real, y'all. It ain't no... Look, that's why, again, it behooves us to be obedient in this hour. You dig? Ask the Most High to send His Spirit to dwell within us, comfort us, to guide us, so we can work the works of the Messiah in this earth. Now, what time is it? Ain't nothing else popping. It's nothing else to do. What are you doing? You could be out there with the world right now, making yourself more of an enemy of the Almighty. Or you could be up in here, striving, you know what I'm saying, to get right. That's what time it is. All right, come on, now, let's get it. And shall be removed like a cottage. Mm -hmm. And the transgressor. Transgression. Thereof, transgression. Mm -hmm. Thereof shall be heavy upon it. Uh -huh. And it shall fall. Ooh. And not rise again. Now it's going more into the, the rulership in this earth. You feel me? What's coming down. But notice, earth is shaking. Earth is reeling to and fro. There's a power shift coming. Prophecy is being fulfilled. All right, come on, now, let's get it. 21. And it shall come to pass in that day that Yohei shall punish the host of the Howards and are on high. That are on high. That are on high. Mm -hmm. And the kings of the earth upon the earth. Mm, hallelujah. Come on. <laughs> and they shall be gathered together mm -hmm. as prisoners. Are gathered in the pit. In the what? In the pit. Man, hey, lake of fire is real. Come on. Or the bottomless pit is real. Go ahead. Up. And shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days shall they be visited. Come on. Then the moon shall be confined. Or lose her light. Come on. And the sun is shade. And the sun going to black out, lose his light. Go ahead. When Yohei of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion. I don't worry. In Mount Zion. So we got location. Mount Zion is Jerusalem, y'all. That's the land. All right, go ahead. And in Jerusalem, uh -huh. and before his ancients. Gloriously. Command. That's right. And before his ancients, gloriously. All right. Earthquakes in diverse places. And let's get our prayer. Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Just a few verses in Matthew 24. Envy not your oppressor and choose none of his ways. All right. Let's read. Uh, let's read Matthew 24, 4 through 8. You gone, young man? Yes, sir. All right. I got you, brother. All right. Hold it down, all right? Yes, sir. Serve the most high, my brother. Charge your light. Be safe, little brother. All right. Go ahead on in and chill on out. Back to the rest of the yeah, day. Yeah, get on off these streets. Smoke it. Show sure it, boys. I'm like Beirut, Lebanon out there. All right. Matthew 24, let's read 4 through 8, and let's get this pro off. The more than them in ascension of Isaiah. More into these scriptures and these with these books, a lot of people scared of. And we keep running, we keep running more and more into the Son of the Most High. More and more. It's, it's crazy. More and more people denying them, and we keep getting more and more proof. <laughs> what a most somebody's mo going. Most high is poetic. It's very. All right, come on, Rock, let's get it. And Yeshua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Y'all hear that? Take heed, no man deceive you. Don't lose your crown. I hear Israel. Commiserating. Come on, Rock. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Messiah, and shall deceive many. Yeah, and many have come. Many have come, even out of the Israelite movements. 
various movements in the earth. Many have showed up claiming they Messiah. They the anointed one, right? And those would have said deceive many, man. And they have. All right, come on. All right, verse six. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war. And war now, Trebuff, it's just this week. We got Iran. We got Russia. Right? You're going to hear wars and rumors of wars. And you know they didn't took fire. And emergency meetings just was called July 2nd for the leaders in the United States and Russia. And we, hey, we more than likely in World War III right now. I don't even know it. You understand? You know, we the last ones to find out anything anyway. You understand? We more than likely in it. You understand? If you got if you got naval destroyers and submarines firing on each other, both claim they, they both claim they in their own territorial water. You understand? But both claiming they wasn't. And it's been lives took behind it. You understand? And then you got drones being shot down. Oh, we this is this is major. This is, and then you got Israel striking Iranian targets in Syria. You could be well already in it. You understand? And not even know it. Still arguing over bill money. All right, come on. Right, you should hear wars and rumors of war. So we're hearing that, right? Come on. See that ye be not troubled, mm -hmm. for all these things must come to pass. Come on. But the end is not the yet. The end is not yet. Don't be troubled. So when you see these things, he's when he's saying, don't be troubled, don't be afraid. It has to happen. You understand? We got to go through this to get to our kingdom. So it ain't so you be aware, you understand, but not afraid. You warn your people because you tell them, look, get your life together before you be on his bad side. But for those of us that's in the truth, that's striving to be righteous, there ain't nothing to be afraid of. Nothing. Stay watchful, stay prayed up. All right. Come on, Hebrew. For nation shall rise against nation uh -huh. and kingdom against kingdom. Mm. And there shall be famine uh -huh. and pestilence. Come on. And earthquakes uh -huh. and diverse places. So we got the famines, you know what I'm saying? The farmers, uh, especially all throughout the Midwest. Whether it's been corn or whether it's been soybeans or whatever, the farmers were never in the plant this this season. Yeah. All throughout what they call the heartland of the United States. So we got pestilence or famines, right? We got pestilences going on and earthquakes in diverse places. Check U.S. Geological Survey. Over 100 earthquakes happen every day. So the words that he said 2,000 years ago are echoing right now. They echo throughout eternity. All right? What else to say in verse 8? All these are the beginning of sorrows. All these are the beginning of sorrows. All right, y'all. We're about to pray. You dig? I got the ascension of Isaiah up right here. It's on earlychristianwritings.com. If you don't got the book yourself, I sent it to you already. Yeah, sent it to you when you responded back. Yeah. All right, that's up on the board right now. All right, we're going we gonna to go ahead and pray and get her done. And we're going to read about the martyrdom. Isaiah actually was martyred, y'all. When it's saying Hebrews 11, we ain't got to go there. But in Hebrews 11, verse 32, it talk about how... Uh, Things what, what things happen to those that are in the faith. Some of these men, a lot of these men were martyred. Martyr mean they would they took a righteous death. They took a death for what it was they believed and stood on. You feel me? That's all throughout the scriptures as well. Revelations six chapter nine through eleven, the souls under the altar. They were actually martyred because they stood up and laid their lives down for this testimony. All right. Again, people don't die for stuff they don't believe, man. Like, I don't even know where people are getting that from. Okay? It says right here, Hebrews 11, verse 32. It says, and what shall I say? What shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David and Samuel and of the prophets, plural. Isaiah is a prophet. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises. Stop the mouths of lions, bigger the faith, bigger the miracles, huh? Quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong, wax valiant in fight, turn to flight the armies of the aliens. The women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance. They might obtain a better resurrection. Yeah. Yeah, when you lay your life down, that's glorious. All right. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. Hmm? Yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. Yeah. A lot of brothers in the book of Acts were locked up. Paul, Peter, John and them, Silas. You dig? 
And if you look up the depth of the 12 disciples on Google, you're going to see how all of them met their end. They all met a violent end. Yeah, John the Baptist was beheaded by Herod because he told Herod you ain't supposed to be laying with your uh your brother's wife. You dig? So then so she got mad and told her daughter to go dance for her husband. You dig? And he was so drunk off some wine, he told her, Whatever you request of me, I'll give it to you. She said, Give me John the Head Baptist on a, on a charger on a plate. You dig? And he was like, Damn, well, all right. So he couldn't look dumb in front of his friends. They went and beheaded John the Baptist. Yeah. That's part of this walk. Martyrdom is part of it. It says they were stoned. They were sawn asunder. So when I read this before, I actually read the martyrdom of Isaiah. I, was, I just wonder who was sawn, who was sawn in half? You did what prophet that happened to? We're gonna find out today. <laughs> We're gonna read it. I'm like, dang. What shows that this record right here is authentic because. The writer of Hebrews, who was Shaul or Paul of Tarsus, he had, he had the history that one of the prophets was sawn in half. Which one was it? We're going to read about it today. They were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in and caves of the earth. Yeah. Yeah. All this happens to the to the elect and chosen of the Almighty, huh? Yeah. All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and get this prayer off, y'all. If you was living in Israel right now, it'll be roughly 6 12 in the morning. We're gonna do the most high's prayer. Then we're gonna petition that he send his spirit to dwell in us forever. And let's get into this ascension of Isaiah. And let's read about this beloved one. The son of the most high, everybody keeps saying don't exist. All right, how we looking? Everybody all good? All right, y'all, you know how we do. We face Jerusalem, which is toward that corner right there, actually, y'all. Toward the corner. All right, uh, we face Jerusalem. Uh, we're going to say the master's prayer in the Hebrew tongue. We're going to say it in English, and then we're going to, you know, petition the heavens. Let's get her done. I see Ima Shambula on the line. I know she's ready to get it done. She said, well, it was a volcano yesterday, huh? All right, Mark, it's just right here. All right, y'all, repeat after me. Abinu, Shabbat Shemayim, Yikadesh, Shimka, Tabo, Malkute Ka, Yeah, I say, Ratzon Ka, Kabat Shemayim, Cain, Baaret, Etlakim, Kukainu, Tang Lanu, Hayon, Uslak Lanu, Oh, Katainu, Kamo, Shell So King, Gum, Anaknu, Lakotin, Lanu, Wao, Tabienu, Lide, Nisayo, Ki. He in cult say new mean hurrah, mean hurrah, kila cot, kila cot, her mom look up, her la ome, ola me, ola me, amen, hallelujah, 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 praise the mighty Yah, our father in heaven, holy is your name. May your, come, May your kingdom come and your will be done, will be done. On, earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we also have forgiven those who sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom. And the, power, and the power and the glory, and the glory. Forever, forever and ever, ever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the mighty Yah. Yo, hey, why, hey, Yahweh, Elohim, El El Yod, pray down your Ruach, Hakodesh. Let your power and your mind live in us forever. Bahashim, Hamashiach, Yahushua, Yodhei-Wahei, Yahweh, Elohim, El El Yod, break down your Ruach, Hakodesh. Let your power and your mind live in us forever. Bahashim, 
the Mashiach, Yahushua, Yodei Wave, Yahweh, Elohim, El El Yon, rain down your Ruach, Hako Desh. Let your power and your mind live in us forever. Bahashem, Hamashiach, Yahushua, Yahweh, Yahweh, Elohim, El El Yon, rain down your Ruach, Hakodesh. Let your power and your mind live in us forever. Bahashem, Hamashiach. Yahushua, 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 Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise, Praise the mighty Yah. That's right. Let's get her done. Ah, yeah. You what? Go to sleep. Yeah. Nah, you going off? Yeah. He ain't sleep. going. He ain't going to sleep. Yeah. He might have treated off the front lines, man. Yeah. Oh <laughs> man, he going off. I'm going off. All right, y'all. Uh, all right, y'all. Yahoo, all praise the glory and honor. Let's get it. Let's get it. Bogotov, Aki, Yadia, Dowdy. Blessings from the Holy Land. Blessings to you. Ty, tell you that Kelly life with it like Ock, Long Little King. Hey, man, if you going to sleep, don't be on the phone. He trying to go. He, he, man, yeah, don't be on the phone talking. You going off. You can actually stream that. Uh, You can actually stream the class to the TV if you need to. Yeah, we out there going off on their commiserating on the on the phone. Uh, <laughs> love Jones and all right, all praise and glory now to the most high. That's right, praise the mighty y'all. Praises, man, that feel good. All right, y'all. All right, so look, we in the ascension of Isaiah. It's called the martyrdom and ascension of Isaiah. Actually, um, it's actually in the second volume of the Old Testament Pseudepigrapha, volume two. All right, uh, so us on page 156. All right, and uh, what we're gonna do is gonna read like chapters, they some of them short chapters. We're gonna read chapters one through uh, 11. I think it is we're gonna jump a little bit. All right, the miraculous birth, yeah, going to the miraculous birth of the Messiah, too, man. If we can get all the way over there, all right, we can get into some of that and go into the crucifixion of them, too. His ascension through the heavens. We're gonna try to get through all of the whole entire thing. It really ain't that long. Our uh, praises, glory, and honor, powerful. Our uh, praises, our uh, praises, our uh, praises. All right, so let's get it. It's up on the board. I can try to let me see if I can try to make it bigger uh, without having to like. I'm trying to like stop from scrolling left to right. You dig? But if I got, let me see if I can make it a little bigger. All right, so this is chapter one. All right, that's right, Yahoo. All right, and it came to pass in the 26th year of the reign of Hezekiah, king of Judah, that he called Manasseh his son. Okay, so Hezekiah had a son named Manasseh. Remember that. All right, now he was his only one, and he called him in the, into the presence of Isaiah, the son of Amos, the prophet, and to the presence of Josab, the son of Isaiah. All right. So Hezekiah calls his son Manasseh in the presence of Isaiah and Isaiah's son, Josiah, in order to deliver unto him the words of righteousness which the king himself had seen. So basically to instruct his son on what way he should go in, you understand, once he takes over his father's throne. All right. Once he takes over his father's throne. All right. So we got the prophet, the top prophet in the earth there and the prophet's son. All right. Three. And of the eternal judgments and torments of Gehenna. Gehenna, y'all, is another word for the lake of fire. All right. And of the eternal judgments and torments of Gehenna, 
and of the prince of this world and of his angels and his authorities and his powers and the words of faith of the beloved which he himself had seen in the 50th year of his reign during his illness now what we gonna do y'all we gonna identify who this beloved is all right just like in enoch we identified who the elect one was yesterday you understand we gonna identify who this beloved and the words of the belief of the beloved which he himself had seen in the 15th year of his reign during his illness verse 5 did y'all know anything about hezekiah the most high had commanded him to die but then hezekiah fell on his face and he he begged the most high for mercy and the mercy most high gave him 15 extra more years on his life you can read that story in isaiah the 38th chapter all right, Isaiah 30. Actually, the, the, the uh, sundial went backwards. We used to measure we used to measure the sun as well in Israel. We had sundials, and the sundial went back 10 degrees as a sign that the most high would respect Hezekiah's prayer. You understand? And grant him 15 more years in his life. All right. And when he had delivered, and he delivered unto him the written words which Samnas the scribe had written, and also those which Isaiah the son of Amos had given to him. And also to the prophets that they might write and store up with him what he himself had seen in the king's house regarding the judgment of the angels. We something that's another topic everybody's scared of. The judgment of the angels. And all you gotta do is watch the class we did called As in the Days of Noah. We went over the some some, some uh, jaw breaking stuff. All right, y'all jaw dropping stuff. The judgment of the angels and the destruction of this world. And regarding the garments of the saints and their going forth and regarding their transformation and the persecution and ascension of the beloved you see that and regarding their transformation and the persecution and the ascension of the beloved who is this beloved that was persecuted and ascended as we keep reading, it's going to identify who it is, you dig? But we've been in the, in, in the spirit of defending the testimony and the authority and the throne of the Son of the Most High. Because the Most High sent him. You understand? Uh, we, only, we only do it out the law and the prophets, but all these extra uh, biblically endorsed books talk about the Messiah too. Which adds further to our case, you understand? So you shouldn't be falling off in this last hours. I'm a Hebrew, but I don't believe in the Messiah. You're going off. That's major. That's major league blasphemy. You understand? Like you can't be like in this. And at first, you was professing them, and then you fall back. Like, nah, I'm good. I'm not. Just, I'm a Hebrew. I'm gonna keep the laws. Like, you know, it, it, it. There's a law of faith. Moses said, "One coming. If you don't listen to him, that's a law. If you don't listen to him, you're gonna be. Your soul is gonna be required of you. Meaning, you're gonna be destroyed from the midst of your people." There is a so there is a law of faith. You have to believe in the one the most high sins. Period. All right. So notice it says, and regarding their transformation, all right, talking about the saints and their transformation, our glorious bodies, right? And the persecution and the ascension of the beloved. That's right, Shy Yak out of D Town. More confirmation. Because you know that conversation me and you had about a month back. You understand? So I'm glad, you know, in, in a way these things start coming out, man, because yeah, I'm about to go into all of them. I'm about to go into all the records that mention Messiah, right? We're going to go over all the prophecies that mention them all of them. We can talk about this until he returns. It's endless. It's just what it is, y'all. So yeah, more confirmation of uh, Shayak, down the rate. You understand? So we know a beloved brother that fell off, don't we? We know a beloved brother that don't even profess him no more. And, and it, it's impossible. You can't profess him and then, and then you know what I'm saying, uh, start talking bad about him. This is not a revolving door. So we're going to identify who this beloved is because this beloved was persecuted and he ascended on high. All right. If y'all see that so far, throw a seven up in the chat. Y'all see that so far, throw a seven up in the chat. Whoever this beloved is, was persecuted and he ascended all right just throw daily in the crowd all praises all right everybody seen the sevens all right y'all getting it y'all getting it all right verse six in the 20th year of the reign of hezekiah isaiah has seen the words of this prophecy this is when he got his vision right 
and had delivered them to Josab, his son. And while he, Hezekiah, gave commands, Josab, the son of Isaiah, Isaiah standing by. Isaiah said to Hezekiah the king, but not in the presence of Manasseh, only did he say unto him, as the Most High liveth, and the spirit which speaketh in me liveth. All these commands and these words will be made of none effect by Manasseh, your son. And through the agency of his hands, I shall depart mid the torture of my body. So Isaiah tell Hezekiah, while Manasseh ain't around, like everything you telling your son and command him to do, you're doing it for nothing. Your son is going to kill me. Imagine how he felt as a not only as a king, but as a father. Like, hey, look, the prop, the most highest top prophet in the earth just told you, look, man, you're wasting your time trying to raise him up and make him righteous. Hopefully, I'm hoping he remember the commands. Your son gonna kill me. Dang, bro. <laughs> That's right, Ron Lemons. The volume of the book is written of him. All right. And he said, and through the agency of his hands, I shall depart mid the torture of my body. Your son gonna torture me, and I'm gonna leave this earth. That's how Isaiah left about her, a prophet of the Almighty, man. Dick. And Samael Makira, y'all, that's another name for the devil. All right. I actually got it right here in the uh my actual pseudepigrapher. I got down here, I got it highlighted it because it got the letter U next to it, right? All right, so it's a Samael Makira, and I went down to U in the highlight. It says, according to Jewish tradition. Samael was originally one of the chief archangels, but after inciting the serpent to tempt Eve, he became the leader of the Satans. Wow. Satan, in other words, y'all. It is in such a role that he appears in Askeels, where Samael seems to be nearly another name for Bel Ur. Huh? No, Bel Ur, right? We grew up listening to or watching the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. A prince is a principality. Bel Air is one of the Satan's demons. You will talk. All right. Another name for Bel Air. Samael is mentioned also. Uh, they talking about in this book right here, one eleven. So chapter one, verse eleven. Chapter two, verse one. Chapter three, verse thirteen. Five, fifteen, seven, nine, and eleven forty one. And the last passage is called Samael Satan. <laughs> huh? Malkira, used her as an additional name for Samael, means in Hebrew, king of evil. I heard it? King of evil, which makes sense because Malachi's king, Ra, is evil. King of evil, wow. Elsewhere, his name occurs as a variant of Belkira, the name of the Samaritan opponent of Isaiah. And we're going to get into that too. All right, so in other words, in other words, the spirit of Satan was on Manasseh, the son of Isaiah, and the son of uh, Hezekiah, should I say. And me told him, look, your son going to kill me. And it's because the devil was in him. You understand? And the devil was in supreme opposition to the visions that Isaiah was seeing because Isaiah started seeing the visions of the beloved of the Most High and the role he was going to play where he was in the heavens, in the seventh heaven, and how he was going to descend into this earth, be born, you understand, be persecuted, be resurrected and ascend back on high. You feel me? And that vision, that vision that Satan did not want people that have or know, so he persecuted Isaiah through the king of Judah, Manasseh. You see what I'm saying? Now watch this. So when we should, when we read, and Samael Malkira, that's Satan, will serve Manasseh and execute all his desire, and he will become a follower of Bel Air rather than of me. Beller is another name of demons. Another na demon you hear in the scriptures is Beelzebub. Beelzebub, Beller, Samael, Makira, all of them are, are, are princes of the darkness, princes of the devil, basically. All of them are Satan in so many words. Is it spelled it right? Yeah, it, it, it sounds like Beliar. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, it's all interchangeable. All right. And many in Jerusalem and in Judea. All right, and many in Jerusalem and in Judea, he will cause to abandon the true faith and be, be liar. Let me go ahead and call him what he is. And be liar would dwell where in Manasseh. 
So you got to be careful in calling everybody the devil. The devil's a spirit. You understand? And being that this was a Hebrew king, he was a so-called, who you call black man? He's, so he was a devil. <laughs> you understand? And, and be liar would dwell in Manasseh and by his hands, I shall be sawn asunder. Now we just read in Hebrews 11, they were sawn asunder. And I used to always wonder, well, what prophet was sawn asunder? You did before we read this a few years back. And I'm like, read, that was Isaiah. Isaiah was sawn asunder or sawn in half. And this is Isaiah telling the king this. Like, look, man, I'm going to be sawn in half by your son. He is going to be a house, a domicile. You feel me? A rest haven for Satan and his demons. Your son is against me. You can try all you want to raise him up in righteousness. It's not going to work. What that word of the most high, and then this this trip of how they feel there's a prophet of the most high, knowing you looking at the little joke that's gonna kill you. You understand? But even in that, it, it wasn't like Isaiah could jump off the porch and say, Well, I'm gonna kill him before he killed me. You know how we get today. I'm gonna kill you before you kill me. You understand? Oh, you know, at times it called this walk calls for you to lay your life down. You understand? It's a righteous death. It did. That's part of this walk, too. You know what I'm saying? People like, you know, people scared to die because they fear what they don't, they, they fear what they don't understand. You know what I'm saying? But that's part of this walk. This man is straight telling the father of this next king coming up that look, your son gonna kill me, man. He is gonna be a rest haven for the devil and his demons. And I'm not, and he ain't just gonna kill me. I'm going to be sawn in half by him. Imagine how the king feel. Imagine how the prophet feel. Like you got to just man up like, hey, I was born for this thing, whatever. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good question. Sister, as are we going to see those that have been tortured in that way? Here, let's go to Revelation 6 real quick. I'll show you. Revelation 6. 3, 9 to 11. Excellent question. Excellent question. Show y'all something. This is about those that they get martyred. They lay their lives down for this truth, man. The most high is a righteous judge. So sister asks those that have been basically martyred or innocent blood has been spilled. You feel me? Because they were being righteous. All right? Because they were being righteous. All right? What's to come? What's to come? All right, Revelation 6 and 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of the Most High and for the testimony which they held. So these men were martyred. They were slain for the word of the Most High and for the testimony which they held, right? Like Stephen in the book of Acts. He was actually murdered by Hebrew Israelites who didn't believe in the Messiah. Yeah. And they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O master, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Good question. And white robes, meaning salvation, and white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled yeah you're gonna see him you're gonna see him there's a there's a there's a straight up uh a righteous reward for those that were that laid their lives down and were martyred for the word of the almighty All right straight up yeah that's true yehuda isaiah Yisrael. that's a that's a uh <laughs> that's a hard pill a lot of brothers don't want to swallow you understand Oh, up here, they don't want to swallow. But it's the truth. It's the truth. All right, Cain was killed by, Abel, Abel was killed by Cain. He was fresh out the God. In verse 9, verse 10. And when, and when Hezekiah heard these words, he wept very bitterly and rent his garments and placed earth upon his head and fell on his face. And Isaiah said unto him, the counsel of Samael against Manasseh is consummated not will avail thee so it's finalized 
You understand? He's basically saying there's nothing that you can do about it. There's nothing you can do. This is set in stone. All right. And on that day, Hezekiah resolved in his heart to slay Manasseh, his son. Hezekiah, like, man, I'm gonna kill him then. He about to do what to you? Well, I'm gonna lay him down. <laughs> right? Verse 12. And Isaiah said to Hezekiah, the beloved. Did we keep hearing about this beloved? Who is this beloved? The beloved have made of none effect your design and the purpose of your heart would not be accomplished for with this calling have i been called and i shall inherit the heritage of who the beloved isaiah said i was born for this and you trying to kill your son ain't gonna work either and then i'm going to inherit the heritage of the beloved who is this beloved we talking about yep who is this beloved that's right, Aisha Fraser. Be a liar, Beller. That's what it is. That's right, my Jamaican brethren. We already know. Chapter 2. Chapter 2. And it came to pass after that Hezekiah died and Manasseh became king. And he did not remember the commands of Hezekiah's father, but forgot them. And Samael abode in Manasseh and clung fast to him. This man, full of, no waste, no time. Full of the devil. Full of the devil, y'all. All right. And Manasseh forsook the service of Elohim, his father, and he served Satan and his angels and his powers. And he turned aside the house of his father, which had been before, which had been before the face of Hezekiah from the words of wisdom and from the service of Elohim. And Manasseh turned aside his heart to serve Belur or be liar or the angel of lawlessness who is the ruler of this world, is Belier, whose name is Matan Bukas. And he delighted in Jerusalem because of Manasseh, and he made him strong and apostatized in Israel and in the lawlessness which was spread abroad in Jerusalem. So apostatizing, idolatry, all type of stuff, man. You did. In other words, at this time, since Manasseh was ruling, Satan's seat, or Satan's throne actually was in Jerusalem because he was the one that was controlling the king in Jerusalem. You see? Mm. Verse 5. And witchcraft and magic increased. Wow. Wow. We just had a class about that a couple days ago. And witchcraft and magic increased. And divination and auguration and fornication, all the Asians, huh? And a and adultery and the persecution of the righteous by Manasseh and Baal Akira and Tobiah the Canaanite and John of Ananoth and by Zadok the chief of the works and the rest of the acts behold they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel and when Isaiah the son of Amos yep and when Isaiah the son of Amos saw the lawlessness which was being perpetrated in Jerusalem and the worship of Satan and his wantonness. He withdrew from Jerusalem and settled in Bethlehem of Judah. Wow. So he ended up going to the very place where the Messiah will be born at. You see, let me get about a Jerusalem, go to Bethlehem, the very place David was born at, the very place the Messiah would be born at. Isaiah did, right? And there also there was much lawlessness and withdrawn from Bethlehem. He settled on a mountain in a desert place. And Mac and Micah the prophet and the age Ananias and Joel, Habakkuk, and his son Josab, and many of the faithful who believed in the ascension into heaven withdrew and settled on the mountain. All right, so there were still righteous prophets that was rolling with them. Still righteous prophets, you dig. They were all clothed with garments of her and they were all prophets and they had nothing with them but were naked not butt naked y'all i mean they didn't have a whole bunch of clothes they only had the clothes on their back you understand we got to really get into hebrew culture and context to see what was going on some people say uh they was running around jack naked no it's not <laughs> it's not saying that man saying all they had was the clothes that were on their back they didn't have like you can go in your closet today and you got a whole fancy wardrobe laid out they didn't have it you know what I'm saying? And they all lamented with, with a great lamentation because of the going astray of Israel. And these and these ate nothing save wild herbs, which they gathered on the mountains. And having cooked them, they lived thereon together with Isaiah the prophet 
and they spent two years of days on the mountains and hills. They like, man, we got to get about a society, man. You know what I'm saying? We got to get about a society. Like this is evil. Evil is spreading all over the Holy Land. How about we go to the mountains? How about we just eat wild herbs and you know what I'm saying? And then pray and, and, and fast and you know what I'm saying? And, and cry out to the Almighty. You feel me? Society, it caused you to do that though. Sometimes you just gotta just segregate and separate yourself. Like, man, I'm out of here, man. Too much going on in these concrete jungles, man. Too much. All right. All right, verse 12. Now that this while they were in the desert, there was a certain man in Samaria named Baal Kira, of the family of Zedekiah, the son of Kenan, a what? A false prophet. Wow. Whose dwelling was in Bethlehem. Now Hezekiah, son of Kani, who was the brother of his father, and in the days of Ahab, king of Israel, had been the teacher of 400 prophets of Baal and had himself smitten and reproved Micah, the son of Amadiah, the prophet. Let's bring that up real quick, too, because that's a good story. Let me bring it up real quick, y'all. Let's go to, uh, I believe it is 2 Kings, I believe, maybe 2 Kings 22. Show y'all this. Show you how all this I line up. All right. No, not 2 Kings 22. It might be 2 Kings 18. My bad. Show you how this line up, man, because you dig? There were all false prophets in the earth. Woo! Okay. So we're going to start right here at verse 18. In the war, not stop Egypt, but if you are about not a for prey, get pleasures. Is that what that was? Boy, he slapped him on, he slapped him on up. I don't think that's it. This is the second king. Let me see something real quick. Let me find it real quick. I want to show y'all that because man, this dude straight smacked his brother up, man. Smacked him up, and he had prophesied about the evil that was happening. First Kings 22 look like. First Kings 22. I think that's it. That may be it. It may not. I thought it was a 22 in there somewhere. Let me see. Second Kings 22. I think that's down in 18 if it is. I keep seeing 18. Yep, here it is right here. All right, y'all. Uh, we're going to go to First Kings 22. Uh, we're going to start at verse 15. All right, let me show y'all something real quick. We just read over here in the Ascension of Isaiah about a false prophet, all right, that smacked up, that smacked up Micah, all right? And it says right here, uh, was a brother's father in the days of Ahab, King Israel, he had been a teacher, 400 of prophets of Baal, had him sm self smitten and reproved Micah, the son of Amada, the prophet. And he, Micah, had been reproved by Ahab and cast into prison. And he was with Zedekiah, the prophet. They were with Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, king in Samaria, all right? So let's go see what happened. Let's go see what happened, all right? So 1 Kings 22, we're going to start at 15 just real quick. I want to show y'all some history. Show y'all that these records line right up. A lot of people are scared of these extra biblically endorsed books, but it's the truth. It's the truth. All right? 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 15. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micah. Shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we for birth? And he answered him, Go and prosper, for the most I shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the most high? And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. The most I said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? And he said, hear thou therefore the word of the most I. I saw the most I sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the most I said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, 
And another said on that matter. So the Most High is holding the council. In the spiritual realm, Ahab, the king of Israel, because the Most High prophesied that he would die. Now the Most High got to hold a council in the spiritual realm, you see, and see what spirit is going to go inspire him to go to war so he can die. Yeah, you feel me? Everything is ordained in the spiritual realm before it manifests in the physical. A lot of people don't want to accept that, but it's the truth. All right? Uh, and one said on this manner, and another on that manner. Verse 21. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Most High and said, I will persuade him. And the Most High said unto him, wherewith or how? How are you going to persuade him? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also, go forth and do so. So he asked him, who going, which one of my servants is going to go persuade Ahab to go up to Ramoth Gilead that he'll die? So then the, the, the angels start conversing amongst themselves. And once they look, I'll go. He said, well, what you going to do? He said, I'm going to go forth and I'm going to be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. He said, all right, we'll go ahead and get that done. You're going to persuade him and you're going to prevail, right? So this is what Micah is telling the king. Like, look, this is what it is. 23. Now, therefore, behold, the Most High have put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these your prophets. This is what Micah telling them. The Most High put a lying spirit in these false prophets' mouth. And the Most High has spoken evil concerning thee. 24. But Zedekiah, the son of Kena, went near and smote Micah on the cheek. And said, which way went the spirit of Yahweh from me to speak unto you? See, the false prophet smacks up the real prophet. All right. And Micah said, behold, thou shalt see in that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. And the king of Israel said, take Micah and carry him back unto Amon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say thus, say of the king, put this fellow in the prison. Real prophets get locked up for the word. And feed him with bread of affliction. Huh? Feed him with the bad food, the GMO food, the, the bread with mold on it. <laughs> and with water of affliction, dirty water, until I come in peace. And Micah said, if you return at all in peace, the most I have not spoken by me. And he said, hearken, O people, every one of you. Wow. So you see, in this ascension of Isaiah, same thing was happening, all right? That Hezekiah, son of Kani, is Zedekiah. Let's read it again, verse 12. All right, verse 12. And after this, while they were in the desert, there was a certain man in Samaria named Belkira of the family of Zedekiah, the son of Canaan. We just read about him. In 1 Kings 22, a false prophet, all right, whose, whose dwelling was in Bethlehem. Now Hezekiah, or Zedekiah, the son of Kani, who was the brother of his father, and in the days of Ahab, king of Israel, had been the teacher of the 400 prophets of Baal, had himself smitten, right? He, smit, he smitten and reproved Micah, the son of Amada, the prophet. And he, Micah, had been reproved by Ahab and were cast into prison. We just read that in 1 Kings 22. And he was with Zedekiah the prophet. They were with Ahaziah the son of Ahab, king in Samaria. And Elijah the prophet of Tibon of Gilead was reproving Ahaziah and Samaria and prophesied regarding Ahaziah that he should die on his bed of sickness and that Samaria should be delivered into the hand of Leba Nazir because he had slain the prophets of the Most High. And when the false prophets who were with Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, and their teacher, Jalar Joss of Mount Joel, had heard, now he was a brother of Zedekiah when they persuaded Ahaziah, the king of Agaron, and slew Micah. Micah got slain too. Wow. Chapter 3. Chapter 3. That's right, my Octi out of, out of uh, Memphis. Very heavy, man. We into all these, well, lately we about to get into all these so-called lost books and we about to even show the testimony of Messiah in these. You understand? Chapter three, 
the martyrdom and ascension of Isaiah, who was sawn in half by wicked Israelites who had the devil in them. All right. And Bakira recognized and saw the place of Isaiah and the prophets who were with him where he dwelt in the region of Bethlehem and was an adherent of Manasseh. And he prophesied falsely in Jerusalem and many belonging to Jerusalem were confederate with him. And he was a Samaritan. Hmm. And it came to pass when Alagar's Agar, king of Assyria, had come and captive and led away to the mountains and led away and led them away to the mountains of the Medes and the rivers of Tazan. That's talking about the northern captivity, the northern kingdom, where the tribes, when the kingdom was split, when the tribes were led into captivity, the northern kingdom. This Belkiru, while still a youth, had escaped and come to Jerusalem in the days of Hezekiah, king of Judah. But he walked not in the ways of his father Samaria, for he feared Hezekiah. And he was found in the days of Hezekiah speaking words of lawlessness in Jerusalem. And the servants of Hezekiah accused him. And he made his escape to the region of Bethlehem, and they persuaded. And Belkira accused Isaiah. See, before you can be judged, there got to be some type of false accusation. They go forth. All right. And Belkira accused Isaiah and the prophets who were with him, saying, Isaiah and those who are with him prophesy against Jerusalem and against the cities of Judah, that they shall be laid waste against and against the children of Judah and Benjamin. Also, that they shall go into captivity and also against thee, O Lord, the king, that thou shall go bound with hooks and iron of chain. Now trip off this. All these things happen. Which prove Isaiah was a real prophet of the Almighty. He was a real prophet. You understand? But when real prophets bring a message out, those that do not want to hear what they got to say will huddle up and plan on killing you. It did the Messiah the same way. Same exact way. But they prophesied falsely against Israel and Judah. And Isaiah himself have said, I see more than Moses the prophet. But Moses said, no man can see the Almighty and live. And Isaiah have said, I have seen the Almighty, and behold, I live. You repeat this, trumping up charges and everything. Know therefore, a king, that he is lying, and Jerusalem also have he called Sodom, which it is to this day. You feel me? The land of Israel hosts the biggest gay parades in the earth today. It is Sodom. And the princes of Judah and Jerusalem he have declared to be the people of Gomorrah. And he brought many accusations against Isaiah and the prophets before Manasseh. But Beliah or Belur dwelt in the heart of Manasseh, in the heart of the princes of Judah and Benjamin, and of the eunuchs and of the counselors of the king. And the words of Belkira pleased him exceedingly. And he sent and seized Isaiah, locked him up, detained him. Y'all see this? Mm. For Belur was great. Well, Belur was in great wrath against Isaiah by reason of the vision. Now trip off this. This is the whole reason behind it. There's a reason why Isaiah was persecuted by Manasseh. Manasseh, we done read how Satan himself, Satan himself made his home in Manasseh. Isaiah, the Most High, was dealing directly with Isaiah and was giving him visions on the coming of the Son of the Most High or the Beloved One. Satan didn't like that because if the if the beloved one or the son of the most high is coming, guess who kingdom is over? Satan's. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So reason of the vision and because of the exposure with he had exposed Samael. OK, it's again another name for the devil, Satan, that Satan and his demons. You see Bel Air, you see Samael, Samael, is Satan or the devil. Bel Air is just one of his chief demons. That's all it is, y'all. And because through him, the going forth of the beloved from the seventh heaven had be made known. Who is this beloved he's talking about? That's going to be coming down from the highest heaven. From the seventh heaven. This is why the adversary was mad at Isaiah. And he used uh, his own Israelite king to persecute him. Because Isaiah was making known that the coming of the Messiah, you understand, was imminent. And y'all, you can read Isaiah the seventh chapter about his birth. 
Isaiah the ninth chapter, a son going to be born who shall be called the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father. That's Isaiah 9, 6 to 8. Isaiah 9, 1 through 2 gives where his where his uh, ministry is going to be at in Galilee. Isaiah 9, 1 through 2 talk about his ministry in Galilee. Isaiah 9, 6 to 8 talk about he's going to be born. He's going to inherit an everlasting kingdom that will never end. And he shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father of the increase and peace of his government. There shall be no end upon the throne of David to order it and to establish it with justice from henceforth forevermore. The spirit or the zeal of the Most High of hosts shall perform this. So Isaiah in his scroll that's in the, the Torah already prophesied about the coming of the Messiah. Isaiah 11, about the uh, descendant coming out of Jesse. Isaiah 11, 1 and 2. A stem coming out of the rod of Jesse. Or a branch. And you look up branch, it's not Zohar, which is the root word for Nazareth. And all the spirits of the Most High are going to rest upon them. That's Isaiah 11, 1 through 2. Or 1 through 3. Then you get in Isaiah 52. They talk about salvation. The word for salvation is Yahshua. And it says the good news, which is gospel, Basora, which also means flesh. So now we're talking about what? His crucifixion. In the word Elohim is there. And you get in Isaiah 53, he was wounded for our transgressions. Isaiah 63, you understand? Who was this that coming from Eden with dyed garments? Like he'd been treading in the wine fat. Isaiah 61. Or say the most high, the spirit of the most high is upon me to preach deliverance to the captives, the gospel to the meek. He read that in Luke 4 when he was in the uh, synagogue in Capernaum. The entire book of Isaiah was prophesying about the Messiah. Even his return, Isaiah 66, 15 through 17. Yeah. So now, it, so, so it shouldn't be no surprise that we can get into what they call lost books or what we call extra biblically endorsed books. And Isaiah has a vision about the beloved one or the son of the almighty. All right. And why Satan would be mad at him because he said what? That he would be coming forth or let me read that again. And Samael, because through him, the going forth of the beloved from the seventh heaven had been made known. His transformation and his what descent and the likeness into which he should be transformed. That is the likeness of man. Now, we all know the most high himself didn't descend from the seventh heaven. You understand? Because who was the Messiah praying to? Who was he praying to the whole time himself? He was praying to his father. So who was the beloved one? You understand? that descended from the seventh heaven in the likeness of a man. It has to be the son of the Most High. It has to be the Messiah. And this is why the devil persecuted or Satan persecuted Isaiah through Manasseh the king because Isaiah was making known the Messiah on his way. The rightful king is on his way. And guess where he coming from? The seventh heaven. The highest heaven. And that, and that infuriated the adversary because the adversary knew this. He had at once he was an angelic power. He know the he he knows the exact origin of the son of the most high. So the fact that Isaiah, that the most high gave Isaiah that vision, and Isaiah was telling everybody, you understand? Guess what? That made him a marked man. Like for us, we out here teaching the gospel to make us mark men. Make us mark. The adversary is furious. But that is what it is. All right. All right, I can land mine. All right, now trip off this. So his transformation and his descent and the and the likeness into which he should be transformed, that is the likeness of man and the persecution wherewith he should be persecuted. So now we all know the father himself wasn't persecuted. Right. And the tortures. It says tortures. When he tortured leading up to his crucifixion. Wherewith the children of Israel should torture him. 
Yeah, the rebellious leaders in Israel did torture the Messiah. They handed him over to the Romans. And the coming of his 12 disciples. You got to be out your mind not to believe in the son of the Most High. How is this? How is all of this in this book? Y'all, it's frightening for people to claim they believe in him and to fall off in this late hour. That's scary. You should be like, whoa. Because that's like that's very accurate. It's going into his origin in the, in the seventh heaven, his transformation, his descent. You understand him coming in the likeness of a man, his persecution, his torture by the wicked leaders in Israel, and how he had 12 disciples. 12 disciples. Well, that means the Most High gave Isaiah a very specific vision about what was coming. Do y'all know Isaiah lived roughly 700 years, between six and 700 years before the Messiah was born? That was the vision he had 700 years before he even came in the flesh. Yeah, y'all. <laughs> yeah, man, this is serious. This is serious, but beautiful at the same time. All right. <laughs> All right, 12 disciples and the teaching and that he should before the Sabbath be crucified right there. That is pinpoint accuracy. Wow. Ah, oh, look at that. That was scary, boy. He done blacked the screen out. Is your screen? The screen blacked up? Dang, the adversary ain't no earthly good. Everybody scream black. <laughs> can y'all hear me? If y'all can still hear me, throw a seven up in the chat. Dang, that's crazy. I'll let you know the war we in, y'all. The adversary do not want this out. Can y'all hear me, though? If y'all can hear me, put a seven in the chat. You can hear me? They say they can hear me. Let me see if I can. Dang, that's messed up, man. But y'all can hear. All right, so that's cool. Man, that's crazy. Hey, hey, it's what it is. All right, verse 14. Yeah, it's the truth. All right, verse 14. And the 12 who were with him should be offended because of him. And the watch of those who watch the sepulchre and the descent of the angel of the Christian church, which is in the heavens, whom he will summon in the last days. And that Gabriel, the angel of the Holy Spirit and Michael, the chief of the holy angels on the third day will open the sepulchre. So Michael and Gabriel was part of it. And beloved and the beloved sitting on their shoulders will come forth. And send out his 12 disciples. And they will teach all the nations in every tongue of the resurrection of the beloved. That's why everybody know about it. Even Rome knew about it. Even Rome knew about it. You can still see the Google logo. Okay. All right. That's cool. Let's, let's get it. Of the resurrection of the beloved and those who believe in his cross will be saved and in his ascension and to the seventh heaven, which he came. And that many who believe in him will speak through what? The Ruach HaKodesh, the very, the very spirit we call the most high to send down the rain and live in us, right? And many signs and wonders will, will be brought or wrought in those days and afterwards on the eve of his approach his disciples will forsake the teachings of the 12 apostles and their faith and their love and their purity saying what that in the last days many people gonna turn away from the faith and there will and there will be much contention on the eve of his advent and his approach a lot of back and forth all right and in those days many will love office though devoid of wisdom and there will be many lawless elders and shepherds dealing wrongly by their own sheep, and they will ravish them, owing to their not having holy shepherds. And many will change the honor of the garments of the saints for the garments of covetous. 
and there will be much respect of persons in those days and lovers of the honor of this world. And there will be much slander and vain glory at the approach of the master and the Holy Spirit will withdraw from many. And there will not be in those days many prophets, mm. nor those who speak trustworthy words, save one here and there in diverse places on account of the spirit of error and fornication and of vain glory and of covetousness, which shall be in those who will be called servants of that one and in those who will receive that one and there will be great hatred in the shepherds and elders toward each other y'all we see that today you see that happening right now man you know what i'm saying well there will be great jealousy in the last days we see that for everyone will say what is pleasing in his own eyes and they will make of none effect the prophecy of the prophets which were before me and these my visions also and these my visions also will they make of none effect in order to speak after the impulse of their heart all right straight up it is what it is y'all all right so let's get into this chapter four because the chapter four and five is going to be about the execution of isaiah and then uh we're going to read chapter four we're going to read chapter five and then tomorrow we may come back in and get more into it because there's more visions of them about his birth and all that it's 11 chapters in here but i at least want to read four and five before we get out of here all right if y'all understanding so far go ahead and throw a seven up in the chat this next section is called this next section is called the reign of beller or be liar all right and then uh verse 14 is about the second coming of the messiah all right and then chapter five is about the execution of isaiah and then his journey through there and then you get into chapter six he, he talks about his uh, vision he had when hezekiah was alive the vision that got him killed and then chapter seven is his journey through the seven heavens all right the firmament the first heaven second heaven third fourth fifth all that they all short short portions of the chapter all right when you get into chapter eight the error of the sixth heaven chapter nine is the seventh heaven all right and then they go into that some more and talk about the messiah you dig so it is it's a beautiful read man it's a beautiful read if y'all don't got this i would tell y'all to go ahead and get it it goes into the worship of the holy spirit all of it but we're gonna read four and five today all right we're gonna read about the second coming isaiah the second coming as well but we already read that isaiah had a vision of the beloved his his uh descent from the seventh heaven his transformation in the likeness of a man we all read it already all right we read that back in chapter uh three all right uh uh how he will be persecuted how he will be tortured how he will have 12 disciples then how he will ascend again back into the seventh heaven after he was resurrected uh when the most i sent michael and gabriel you understand so if y'all see that so far, you know what I'm saying? That this is talking about the Messiah. It's not talking about the Father Himself. It's talking about the Messiah. He's called the Beloved One. All right. Let's get into this real quick. All right. This is chapter four. All right. And we're gonna go ahead and get into this because this is something that y'all need to trip off of. And there's a certain name that's gonna get said. Further prove what we're talking about. All right. All right, uh, chapter four. And now Hezekiah and Josiah, my son, these are the days. Well, that's Isaiah. And now Hezekiah and oh, Isaiah and Josiah, my son, these are the days of the completion of the world. After it is consummated, Belur, the great ruler of the world, the great ruler of the world, will descend, who have ruled it since it came into being. Yea, he would descend from his firmament in the likeness of a man. And a lawless king the slayer of his mother who himself even this king so that's talking about the coming of the antichrist there is an anti-messiah coming a lot of people don't like to believe that you feel me they be like man i don't know brother i don't know what you're saying but uh it's actually in thessalonians all right that's yeah exactly exactly 
All right, so this is right here, Second Thessalonians. I want to show y'all this real quick. Keep y'all where well, y'all can't look at the screen. I might as well just read it. All right, Second Thessalonians chapter two. All right, Second Thessalonians chapter two. I'm gonna start at verse three. Second, I'm gonna start at verse one. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse one, and we're gonna read down to twelve. All right, the coming of the lawless one. All right, and that's what Isaiah saw too. Before the Messiah would make his second return, the lawless one would show up, the son of perdition. All right. And notice, and notice Satan's kingdom is in the earth too, which is at a different level of heaven. You understand? It's a spiritual realm, y'all, that we can't see. It's all around, but you can feel it and you know it's around you because where do the wicked thoughts come from that you get? Where they come from? Where do wicked thoughts come from that invade your mind? They got to come from somewhere, right? Where do the righteous thoughts come from? They got to come from somewhere. The cartoons back in the day, they had the good angel on your one shoulder and the bad angel on the other. And then you look at it entertainment, but it's true. It's true. It's true, all right? So that was talking about Satan's kingdom that's in the earth, that's in the heavens. Ephesians, the second chapter, call him the prince of the airwaves. How is he that? You know what I'm saying? Because he got a kingdom in the heavens as well, too. It's not on the same level as the almighty, though. You understand? Nah, there's an ascension. There's a descension coming from him, too. He got to descend. You feel me? The lawless one, the son of perdition. And he's going to be in the likeness of a man as well. Second Thessalonians says it. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, start at verse 1. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our master, Yahushua Hamashiach, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, Neither by spirit. Why, why would you be troubled by spirit? Yeah, spiritual realm, out here, right? Neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of a Mashiach is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a fallen away first, and that man of sin be revealed. Who? The son of perdition. So the day of the Messiah will not come until there's a falling away first. What's the falling away? Those falling away from the faith and the belief. You understand? Uh, this section in the martyrdom and ascension of Isaiah is called the reign of Bel Air. Feel me? He, he, there's an there's a antichrist kingdom that's coming. The system is already in place. It's been in place the past 2,000 years. You understand? But there's a, there's a man coming. You understand? And I propose that's who these so-called Jewish folks wait on. They wait on they um Shiach bin Dawid, Messiah, son of David. Because they don't accept Messiah, Yahushua. In their Talmud, they talk bad about him. They say he already heard. And I was listening, I was listening to some rabbis the other day. They saying that they Messiah already is in the earth, living. They didn't already set up their altars of burnt offerings and everything. They got their red heifers. They about to go ahead and try to mimic the Aaronic priesthood once again. They're cloning heifers as well. So what I'm saying is this, the, it, the son of perdition or who we call the anti-Messiah is already in the earth. I mean, that at least that's what the so-called rabbis are saying. They like, he already heard. It. All right. What's about this? So the day of Hamashiach, Yahushua will not come except there be a falling away first. Many going to fall away from the faith, right? And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now trip off what he going to be like. Who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called Elohim. Or that is worship. So that he is Elohim. Sitteth in the temple of Elohim. Showing himself that he is Elohim. Now that's wild because... They've been spending billions of dollars on getting this, what they call this third temple built, right? They got temple currency and all that. Donald Trump faces on the temple currency. So, I mean, we be playing like, oh, they ain't lying. That's Esau and he playing around. Y'all, what y'all think they're making all these moves for? The heathens don't spend billions of dollars for nothing. They don't do that for nothing. You understand? They ain't making altars and getting golden menorahs and spending billions on top of billions. You understand? Got designs for temples and everything. 
just for them, for j just to what? To pump fake you? No, they about to do that. They about to do that. You understand? But in Thessalonians, it was already prophesied to come, right? It says, let me read four again. Who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called Elohim, or that is worship, so that he as Elohim sitteth in the temple of Elohim, showing himself that he is Elohim. Remember not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. That's a question. Like, don't y'all remember I was telling y'all this? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed when? In his time. In his time. You feel me? Because he also say in 1 John that there are many antichrists. It's already in the earth. There are many that oppose the Messiah. But there is one called the son of perdition, the man of sin, who is waiting to be revealed in his time. In his prophecies, he's going to be revealed. Isaiah prophesied about him. In this martyrdom and ascension of Isaiah. Lining right up with 2 Thessalonians. Man, that's scary. That's scary, boy, if you're on the other side. All right? Five. No, six. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in this time. Now you know. Now you got the heads up. You know what this whole thing going to be about. All right? For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he not only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Wow. Only he, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. You understand? So, in other words, people got to lust to want to fall away from Messiah. You understand? And that's what it is until they get took out the way. That's what's happening. That's what's happening out here, y'all. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the master shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. Because mm. mm. Samael is Satan, but Bela is his chief demon. He going to come in the likeness of a man. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. Trip about this. With all power and signs and lying wonders so he gonna be doing miracles too yeah he gonna be doing exactly a charmer a witch a wizard you understand but as for raising the dead you won't be seeing that from him. you won't be seeing resurrection from him. you ain't got no power to get life you understand but you will be seeing miracles that if you not grounded you understand you're gonna mess around and go over there and get your kneecaps dusty bounce on that's why we got to be in the spirit. You understand? He said, that's why I started off and, and said right there, let, in verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means. If you deceive, it's because you were deceived. Because you weren't paying attention. Yeah, because he showed up doing some type of miracles. Exalting himself as if he God don't mean that's the Messiah. Yeah, and he show up before the real Messiah show yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Being distracted. Yeah. Exactly. Being distracted and, and not paying attention. You understand? People's minds are going to snap. You understand? They ain't going to know because they're not paying attention. They're not praying. They're not watching. All right? And trip up this. So who, who's coming before the Messiah going to have power, signs, and line wonders? Verse 10. Verse 10, it says, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Truth is a Mashiach, the Messiah. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. You didn't receive Messiah. You turned your back on him, so now you're prepped to worship anti-Messiah. And for this cause, and for this cause, the Most High shall send them strong delusion. 
because you didn't want to honor and reverence his son, it's the most high who's going to send the strong delusion. Man, they should believe a lie that they all might be damned. That's in the Bible. Damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Wow. Wow. So now let's get back. Now, let's get back to this ascension of Isaiah, because this chapter four is about the reign of the Antichrist or be liar or bell -er. That's what this whole chapter is about. All right. All right. If y'all getting some understanding, go ahead and throw a seven up in that deal. All right. Y'all get some seven, get an understanding, throw a seven. And let's go ahead and finish this off. We're going to chapter four and we're going to do chapter five. And after that, y'all, we're going to close out. All right, then we right back up the more uh, by the grace and will of the Almighty. And we're going to keep bringing our revelations about the Messiah, man. This is what it's about in this hour. You understand? Since everybody want to, uh, you know what I'm saying, pull out their so-called water guns and squirt, spit at them. Then, you know what I'm saying, we're going to pull out the guns and the swords for real. You know what I'm saying? And feed his flock. And feed his flock. All right? All right. Right here. Chapter four and one again. And now Hezekiah and Josiah, my son, these are the days of the completion of the world. This is Isaiah talking to Hezekiah when he was still living. After it is consummated, Belur, the great ruler, the king of this world, will descend, who have ruled it since it came into being. Yea, he will descend from his firmament. Firmament is in the heavens. Firmament, right? In the likeness of a man, a lawless king, the slayer of his mother, who himself, even this king, will persecute the plant with the 12 apostles of the beloved have planted. Of the 12, one will be delivered into his hands. Of the 12, one will be delivered into his hands. Who is that? Judas. Of the 12, one will be delivered into his hands. Of the 12 disciples, somebody going to be rolling with the devil. Tell you that in the scriptures, John 6 and 71. Let me read that real quick. John 6 and 71. It's all prophecy, y'all. John chapter 6, verse 71. John 6, 70 and 71. Yahushua answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil. <laughs> One of you was a devil. He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. And we just read here in this ascension and martyrdom of Isaiah, right? Will persecute the plant which the twelve apostles of the beloved planted. Of the twelve, one will be delivered into his hands. All right. Also, also John the thirteenth chapter, verse one. John 13 and 1. All this lines up. All you got to do is know how to properly navigate and line up. All right. John 13 and 1. Now, before the feast of the Pesach, the Passover, when Yahushua knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the mind of the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son to betray him. All right. Let me just read right here. Read right here. That of one of the twelve, one will be delivered into his hands. This ruler, this ruler is the form of that king will come and there will come and there will come with him all the powers of this world and they will hearken unto him in all that he desires. And at his word, the sun will rise at night. Man, it says he's going to be doing lion wonders. In Second Thessalonians, lion wonders, powers, miracles, and all that. But lion wonders, all right. And those that believe him because they didn't receive the Messiah, all right. At his word, the sun will rise at night, and he will make the moon to appear at the sixth hour. And all that he have desired, he will do in the world. He will do and speak like the beloved and like the beloved, right? The beloved is Messiah and will say, I am Elohim. 
And before me, there has been none. How about that? You got somebody making the sun rise at night. You understand? And he's straight telling you, I am the most high. Before me, there was none. But we just read in 2 Thessalonians, who opposed himself above all that is called God and exalted himself above all that is God, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, proclaiming that what? He is God. We just read it right here. Why is this lining up with 2 Thessalonians if this ain't true? Why is it lining up with the, with the scriptures? Mm. Yes, yeah, Second Corinthians eleven thirteen through fifteen. Right, he you know Satan transforms into an angel of light, and even his servants, his ministers, do the same. Satan can transform; he's a shapeshifter. You see, and that lets you know, y'all. Everybody that you run into is not a is not a son of Adam. It's not everybody you run into don't have a soul. Some people are demons in the flesh. A lot of people don't want to admit that. That's the truth. You actually, some, a lot of people, you done ran across certain people and you didn't caught chills or something. You feel me? The herds and stood up on you or something. I mean, something ain't right with that individual. Some people are actually demons in the flesh. Scriptures say Satan can transform himself into an angel of light and his ministers. Ministers mean servants and his demons. Well, his angels can do the same thing. Everybody is not a son of Adam. No we? No we? Say zipper in the back of the head. <laughs> all right. Right here. Seven. And all the people in the world will believe in him. Mm. And they will sacrifice to him. And they will serve him saying, this is God. And beside him, there is no other. So they built the, so now you see why they're coming with the third temple. They got they got to prepare their sacrifices for the Antichrist, y'all. That's who it's for. All right. And they greater number of those who should have been associated together in order to receive the beloved, he will turn aside after them. So the elect is gonna come at the remnant. And there will be, and there will be the power of his miracles in every city and region. And he will set up his image before him in every city and he shall bear sway or rule three years and seven months and 27 days. Now you got the exact time how long the Antichrist going to rule three years and seven months and 27 days. Wow. 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 That's wild right there. All hell going to break loose. And look, it said he going to turn aside after those who really believe in the Messiah, meaning he going to be hunting the true saints. Because we going to be like, nah, that ain't the Messiah. Y'all crazy. It's all, where the resurrection at? You doing all these miracles. Now you ain't resurrected the dead. The resurrection supposed to happen. You're going to be establishing your kingdom. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Where the resurrection at? Yeah. He ain't got the power to get life, though. That's going to be the tip off right there. He did. He's going to be doing all these little fancy miracles and they're claiming he God and people going to be sacrificing to him and getting their kneecaps dusty to him. You understand? And he's going to be ruling three years, three years, seven months and 27 days. But he ain't resurrected nobody. Why not? Because he's not the Messiah. You see, and many people going to be getting caught off, man. They'll be caught off guard. Yep, just like it's mentioned in Daniel and in Revelations. That's right. That's right. That's right, y'all. All right, so we now we see how long he's going to be reigning. Three years, seven months, and 27 days. A little bit over three and a half years. All right? And many believers and saints haven't seen him. And many believers and saints haven't seen him for whom they were hoping who was crucified. Jesus or Yahushua, the master of Hamashiach. Now, his name is mentioned in here. Why is the Messiah, the beloved, why is his name mentioned in the ascension of Isaiah? Like his name mentioned in the New Testament. What's up with that? His name also mentioned in 2nd Ezra, the seventh chapter. I shall send my son Jesus, whom, whom is called the Christ. Or Yahushua HaMashiach. 
in the second Ezra, the second chapter, the son of God crowns those that stood so stiffly for his name. He all over the scriptures, even in what you call the lost books, the pseudepigraphers and all that. This, hey man, this is, this is liberating. This is powerful. This is powerful, y'all. All praise and glory now to the most high. After that, no, to who was crucified, Yahushua, uh, the master of Mashiach. After that, I, Isaiah, had seen him who was crucified and ascended. And those also who were believers in him, of these few in those days will be left as his servants while they flee from desert to desert, awaiting the coming of the beloved. Now we identify that the beloved is Jesus the Christ. In Hebrew, Yahushua HaMashiach. Others say Yahushua HaMashiach. I'm not even here to argue pronunciation. That ain't my job. We simply here to prove that he is real. And many prophets of old had visions of him. You understand? Of his, his origin, his descent, his transformation into a man, his birth. You understand? His persecution, his torture, him being resurrected after three days. And ascending back on high to where he came from. Y'all, that's the New Testament. And this we'll be reading is not the New Testament at all. Wow. And after 1,332 days, right? This is after the reign of this, the so-called uh, anti-Messiah, Bel Air. You understand? That's roughly three years and seven months and 27 days. Roughly speaking, you understand? Because uh, uh, 1,200, 1,260 days is three and a half years. You understand? So basically after the rule of who you call Bel Air or the Antichrist, the son of perdition. All right. After his rulership and after 1,332 days, the master will come with his angels and with the armies of the holy ones from the seventh heaven with the glory of the seventh heaven, and he would drag Belly Ur into Gehenna and also his armies. Gehenna is another name, y'all, for the lake of fire. Read in Revelation the 20th chapter. Revelation the 20th chapter. You see, all this is lining up with the script, y'all. All of it. All right? And he will give rest of the godly whom he shall find in the body in this world and the sun will be ashamed. That's right, because the sun going to lose his darkness, right? That's Matthew 24. And to all who, because of their faith in him, have execrated Belier and his kings, but the saints will come with the master with their garments, which are now stored up on high in the seventh heaven, your spiritual bodies, your garments, bodies of light, right? In the seventh heaven with the master, they will come whose spirits are clothed. They will descend and be present in the world. And he will strengthen those who have been found in the body together with the saints in the garments of the saints. And the master will minister to those who have kept watch in what? This world. He will minister to those or serve those who have kept watch in this world. The scriptures say pray and watch always. See? And afterwards, they would turn themselves upward in their garments and their body would be left in the world. Then the voice of the beloved will in wrath rebuke the things of heaven and the things of earth and the things of earth and the mountains and the hills and the cities and the desert and the forest and the angel of the sun and that of the moon and all things wherein Bel Air manifested himself and acted openly in this world. And there will be a resurrection. Mm. And a judgment in their midst in those days, and the beloved will cause fire to go forth from him, and it will consume all the godless, and they will be as though they had not been created. The Messiah got smoke. He got smoke for the lawless ones, man. <laughs> hey, just could be, brother. 19 and the rest of the words of the vision is written in the vision of who babylon judas iscariot was a uh, anti-messiah and he was what he was a hebrew you dig so what we what we need to be looking for is the signs y'all don't get so caught up in 
skin color. Look for the signs. You understand? Because the anti-Messiah must rule before the Messiah return and destroy him with the brightness of his coming. He got to rule first. Roughly three and a half years. You understand? A little bit over. Then we got a time frame. After his time is over, comes the Messiah. You dig? And, and, and the so-called Belur, the prince of the de demons, the son of perdition, and all his angels are being cast headlong into what's called the lake of fire. Gehenna. All right, all right, right here. Uh, bang, bang, bang. And the rest of the vision regarding the Lord, behold, is written in three parables according to my words, are written in the book which I publicly prophesied. And the descent of the beloved into Sheol, all right, that's in Peter. He descended, you understand, and preached to the souls that were in prison. It's actually in the book of Peter, all right, righteous, righteous yeah, yeah, yeah. And the descent of the beloved to show that what was going on for three days while he was dead. You know what I'm saying? That's actually in the book of Peter. And talk about how he descended into the earth, into the lower parts of the and you know what I'm saying, and witness to those that were uh in the lower parts of the earth. That's that's true. This ain't Catholic stuff, y'all. And the descent of the beloved into Sheol, behold, is written in the section where the master says, Behold, my son will understand. And all these things, behold, they are written in the Psalms, in the parables of David, the son of Jesse, and the Proverbs of Solomon, his son, and the words of Korah and Ethan, the Israelite, and in the words of Asaph, and the rest of the Psalms, also which the angel of the Spirit inspired. Namely, in those which have not the name written, and in the words of my father Amos, and of Hosea the prophet, and of Micah, and of Joel, Nahum, Jonah, and Obadiah, and Habakkuk, and Haggai, and Malachi, and in the words of Joseph the just, and in the words of Daniel. Wow. Wow. So that went into the reign, you understand, of Bella. You dig? And the coming of our master. And his name in English was mentioned. Jesus the Christ. You see? And you got people in these late hours actually telling you, you understand, <laughs> telling you that he never existed. You dig? And we get into these even extra books and they showing them. They will receive. Yeah. So I don't understand what people are not reading. In the lines of like the scriptures, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even in this, it gave you some, it gave you an exact time and rulership of the anti Messiah. About three years, seven months, and 27 days. Three years, seven months, and 27 days. What? Digging after so many other days, 1,300, 332 is when the Messiah come. You understand? You can start putting them numbers in Daniel together. You got 1260, you got 1290, then you got 1330, like five or something like that. You start putting all these numbers together. Like, dang, there it goes. It's right there in the lost book. So it's in what's called a pseudepigrapha. The ascension of Isaiah, he just gave you a specific time. A specific time frame or how long the so-called anti-messiah was going to rule. Three years, seven months, and 27 days. You understand? Now, whatever that come out to, and after 13, what is it, 1,332, 1,332 days, then the messiah is coming. You know what I'm saying? Like, wow. Wow. Then they're going to be sacrificing to this anti-messiah as a god. You're going to be doing signs and wonders, like making the sun come up at night. You know what I'm saying? People are going to be worshiping him as a god. He's going to be claiming he's God, but it said the same thing in 2 Thessalonians. Same thing. He is God, sitting in the temple of God, proclaiming that he what? Is God. The son of perdition. Man. And then we get into the ascension of Isaiah. And it go into the same thing, but it gives him a name. The reign of Belial. Or Bel Air. Actually, the son of Satan. And he gonna descend as well. 
He's going to descend from the firmament. Yeah, he's going to descend. You understand? But those are the elect. I will always remember, he can't raise the dead. He ain't raised the dead. He ain't the Messiah. What you doing all these tricks for, all these miracles for, and you ain't raised the dead? That's what you're supposed to be doing right out the gate. Yep. Yep. Okay, so chapter five, y'all, we about to get into uh, the execution of Isaiah. So that was the whole point of this. And I just want to show y'all, man, that uh, Isaiah actually saw the Messiah. We already identified him as the beloved one. When we come back to more by the grace of the Most High, we're going to get to his ascension after he was sawn in half. His vision, actually, his vision that he had, and he told Hezekiah, actually. And then after that, he was sawn in half. But in his vision, before he was sawn in half, he already had told Hezekiah what it was. About the first level of heaven, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, sixth, and seventh. And on kind of that vision, him telling Hezekiah that, the adversary himself, because he wants to overthrow prophecy, used Hezekiah's son, Manasseh, to kill Isaiah, the prophet of the Most High. You see? Now, here's the account right here. So in Hebrews 11, if somebody ever asked you, well, what prophet was sawn in half? Because a non-Messianic could tell you, there wasn't no prophet sawn in half. Who? Thought you never asked. Let's go to these uh, martyrdom and ascension of Isaiah chapter 5. And again, y'all, it's not our fault that people don't read these, these records. Is it my fault you don't read them? That ain't my fault. That ain't my fault. It did. It's not our fault we got to an answer and you don't. All right. Chapter 5. On account of these visions, therefore, Belur was wroth with Isaiah and he dwelt in the heart of Manasseh. And he sawed him in sunder with a what? A wooden saw. Woo! A wooden saw. You see that? So now we got the answer. Isaiah the prophet was sawn in half on, on behalf of the vision he saw about Messiah. You dig? And that vision is something that, that vision was something that the adversary did not want our people to understand. I'm overthrow prophecy. See? Real talk. So the more that we talk about Mashiach, that's how we know it's a dark spirit out here. So people denying him because it's the same spirit that was on Manessa. You might as well call him for what it is. You got Belair on you. You got Belair on you. That's the same spirit that was on the king of Judah, Hezekiah's son, that caused Isaiah to be murdered. Because he was bringing out the revelation of the son of the Most High. That's the spirit these nine Messianists got on. Call him out what it is i know the name of the demon that's on you boy i know the name i ain't gonna just say you got a demon or a devil on you i know his name you got belial on you or beller that's the same spirit that got my brother isaiah sawn in half with a wooden saw because the adversary did not want the revealing of a mashiach to go forth throughout the earth period and when Isaiah was being sawn in sunder, Belkira stood up, accusing him and all the false prophets stood up, laughing and rejoicing because of Isaiah. Look, these Israelites straight mocking him, man. Happy he being murdered. And Belkira, with the aid of Mechambuchus, stood up before Isaiah, laughing and deriding. And Belkira said to Isaiah, say I have lied in all that I have spoken. And likewise, the ways of Manasseh are good and right. So they're torturing them and they're saying, look, if you just say you lied, maybe it can be some type of, you know, mercy on you. Now, what you going to do? If you know what you're speaking is the truth, it don't matter if you're going through pain. You got to stand on it. Don't matter. No deal. Right? And the ways also of Belkiria and of his associates are good. And this is he, and this he said to him when he began to be sawn in sunder. But Isaiah was absorbed in a vision of the Most High. And though his eyes were open, he saw them not. And he, he, was, he was all in the spirit. See, when the spirit is with you, you feel me? Even certain pain, you ain't going to be feeling pain like that. All right? And Bekira spake thus to Isaiah, Say what I say unto thee, and I will turn their hearts, and I will compel Manasseh and the princes of Yahuda and the people in all Jerusalem to reverence thee. Trip off that. Say what I tell you to say. Take your word back that the Almighty gave you. 
say it all was a lie about the revelation of Yahushua. It's all made up. That's the spirit these anti-Messiahs are coming in today. It's all made up. It's all a lie. That's the son of the devil that's on them. And they tell not say it, just say it was all a lie. And I'll cause everybody not only to have mercy, but to reference you. You see? Wow. And Isaiah answered and said, so far as I have uttered, so far as I have utterance, I say, damned and accused be thou. <laughs> and all they and all thy powers and all thy house. Isaiah say, as long as I got breath in my body. Damnation to you and all your house and all your powers. I'm not taking back the revelation of Yahushua for nothing or no one. It's the truth. He shall, the beloved of the Most High, the Messiah, shall descend from the seventh heaven, take on the likeness of a man, choose 12 disciples, be persecuted, be tortured, be resurrected after three days, and ascend back on high. And this vision Isaiah is seeing 700 years before the Messiah even came. How powerful is that? And why he being sawn, why he about to get sawn in half with a wooden saw, here they come with the compromise. See, if you really about this life, here they come with the compromise. Look, just say it was all a lie. Say the Messiah wasn't real. Just say he was a lie, Mali. That's all you got to say. And we won't kill you. We even have people come bow and reverence you. What this soldier, the most I say, damned and accursed be you and all your powers and all your house. For thou cannot take from me or save the skin of my body. The only thing you can take from me is my flesh. Worst thing you can do to me is kill me. And they seized and sawed in sunder Isaiah, the son of Amos, with a wooden saw. And Manasseh and Belkira and the false prophets and the princes and the people and all stood looking on. And to the prophets who were with him, he said before he had been sawn asunder, go ye to the region of Tyre and Zidane. For for me only have the most high mingled the cup. And when Isaiah was being sawn asunder, he neither cried aloud nor wept, but his lips spake with the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, right? Until he was sawn in half. Woo! This Belair did to Isaiah through Belkira and Manasseh. For Samael was very wrathful against Isaiah from the days of Hezekiah, the king of Judah, on the count of the things which he had been seen, which he had seen regarding the beloved. The beloved is the son of the most high, who was with the most high in the beginning, who descended from the seventh heaven, took on the form of a man, had 12 disciples, was persecuted, tortured, executed, crucified. Laid in the sepulchre after three days resurrected, you understand, by Michael and Gabriel, and then ascended on high. He even descended into, while he was dead, descended into Sheol and preached to the souls that were in prison. The righteous souls that were before the flood and all that. And everybody that died before him. The righteous forefathers. That's in the book of Peter for those that say this is a lie. Well, what do you mean he descended and ministered to the souls in prison. What souls in prison? And where he was descending to? Who we? Who we? It did this all become, read that 15 again. This Belair did to Isaiah through Belkira and Manasseh. Well, Samael was very wrathful against him, against Isaiah from the days of Hezekiah, the king of Judah, on account of the things which he had seen. Because he's seen the testimony of Yahushua and he talked the testimony of him regarding the beloved. And on account of the destruction of Samael, which he had seen through the mass, he also saw that the devil would be destroyed at the coming of the beloved one. While Hezekiah, his father, was still king and he, and he did according to the will of Satan. Now, if y'all got some understanding. And look, this ain't the only place in this ascension of Isaiah where the Messiah is mentioned. If y'all got some understanding, 
Go ahead and throw a seven up in the chat, y'all. Don't let nobody take your crown out here. I'm talking about the Messiah is not real. All right? We don't went through too much as a people. We don't went through too much as a people. You understand? To lose our crown. All right? To lose our crown. And even the adversary tonight tried to stop this word from going forth, but we still was able to hear the audio. So our praise, glory, and honor to the Most High. And y'all, we not done. We got 11 chapters in this ascension of Isaiah. I'm going to pull out some more, too, y'all. He all in, man, he all in the roots. I mean, he all over. He's all over, man. It's truly humbling, truly a blessing. All right, I'm glad everybody got some understanding. Uh, so not only just in the law and the prophets, he went to the Apocrypha as well. You understand? Second Ezra, the second chapter, the son of God that's crowning everybody. You dig? Second Ezra, the seventh chapter. The most I say, he's going to see in his son, Jesus the Christ. <laughs> and then how he going to die after that. All that, that's in the Apocrypha as well. And nine Messianics don't read that either. You dig? Then we got in the Enoch yesterday, he called the elect one. <laughs> Brought before the ancient of days. We compared it to the book of Daniel. Same verbiage, same talk. You see? We got to Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. All of it, y'all. He's everywhere. The volume of the book. Even when we get into the language, the word salvation, all of it. The word for the gospel of good news, y'all, is Basara. Do y'all know Basar in Hebrew means flesh? Then he talked, he took the broke the bread and said, This is my flesh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like it's too. Like it's too intricate and detailed for it to be this just made up. You feel me? You have to throw the entire scripture out and everything that that uh witnesses to it. And you all know ain't nobody doing that. All right. We all know ain't nobody doing that. So our praises, our glory, our honor, y'all willing to more. We're gonna come back and get into uh chapter six. Isaiah visits Hezekiah and has a vision. And this is the vision in which he saw. And then he gonna get into, and then he gonna get into uh, his journey through the seven heavens. All right, that's chapter seven, chapter eight, the ur of the sixth heaven, chapter nine, the ur of the seventh heaven, and we gonna start seeing the Messiah again. All right, and then right here it says, it says I'm gonna give y'all a sneak peek. It says the Lord will indeed descend into the world in the last days. He who is to be called Christ after he has descended and become like you in form. And they will think that he is flesh and a man. And the God of that world will stretch out his hand against the son. And they will lay their hands upon him and hang him upon a tree, not knowing who he is. You know, that's a little sneak peek for the more, y'all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then they go into the worship of the Holy Spirit or the worship of the Son, the worship of the Holy Spirit, but how they both have to worship the Father. You know what I'm saying? That's in her too. Let me get into chapter 10, the worship of the Father by the six lower heavens. And then in chapter 10, it says the Lord Christ is commissioned by the Father. We're going to read that too. When he first got commissioned by the Father and told him, you know what I'm saying? That's a good read. That's a good read. Y'all going to be like, whoa, that's deep. You know what I'm saying? And then the descent of the Lord through the seven heavens, how he came on down. And then chapter 11 goes into the miraculous birth of him. A lot of people scared of that. You dig? But why is it saying in her what we've been teaching for the longest? That he's the direct son of the Most High. Some of the brothers and sisters don't believe that. Hey, we still deal with you where you at. But look, we not denying the power around her. It says the miraculous birth of the Lord. That's how chapter 11 kick off in her. All right? His infancy in life, the crucifixion and resurrection, the ascension of the master through the seven heavens, the conclusion of the vision, and then Isaiah's instructions to Hezekiah. And that's how it ends. All right. So we got through five chapters. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we're going to read we out if through the grace and will of the most high. We're going to read six through 11 tomorrow. And then as we read the spirit of hit and we'll be going into the scriptures, too, and showing how it just line up. Right. And it's ironic how. If this was fake, why do Isaiah in what you call the regular Bible, he got the most prophecies about the Messiah. He actually got them out of all the prophets. He got the most of them. 
You dig? Because he had a vision. He ascended into the heavens and he was shown him. You understand? And through that vision he had, he started telling everybody what it was. And through that gospel, through what he taught, that's what got him sawn in half. And even when he was being sawn in half, he refused to compromise because he was so sure in what he saw and who he knew was coming. Right down to the 12 disciples, y'all, down to the reign of the Antichrist. Y'all know that? That's powerful, man. That's powerful, y'all. That's powerful. All right. So all praise is glory and honor to the most high, the owner, creator, and possessor of all things. Long live his anointed, beloved son, the hearts and minds of the faithful elect. All right, we're going to pray out. We're going to do the, the master's prayer. And then we're going to petition the heavens once again that his mind and power dwell in us forever. As you see, um, the Holy Spirit is even mentioned in here. And for those saying the Holy Spirit wasn't around to the New Testament, that ain't true, man. It's not true. It's not true. All right, I see y'all up in the chat. Once again, thank y'all for y'all prayers and y'all support. North Carolina, North Carolina, I see you, my sister. Tribe of Judah, 11999. Blessings, my brother. Mark is just right out of Omaha, Nebraska. Oh, dare you in the crowd. Blessings as always, sister. Michael Ben Israel, Drew Rocker. That's right, King of the Jews. I, all right, all praise and glory and honor. Andre Ingram. All right, Adonaya, my brother. The uh the husband of sister Odelia. He on the chat, all praises. Solomon Mack, right on for your for your support, brother. Man, you look, you always a faithful brother, man. Most high bless your hand exceedingly. All right, who else we got here? Poppy, my sister. Good to see you back on the trigger. You know what I'm saying? You say, oh, dear, this got you crying. <laughs> hey, all praise, all praise. My sister Mariah Bashia Yisrael from KC, blessings to you. Howard Brown, my Jamaican brethren. Jehu M, Mikael, Ben Yisrael, Almighty Queen. What's up, she brew? Blessings to you. That's all praise. Simply J, my sister. Shariah, she brew. Lamont Will, Prince Blake, Patrice Brashers. Y'all in the building today, all right. My Akbaniah, what's the word, he brew? Shalom, super swag, son. Fourth tribe, Kanye Yehuda, the heathen slayer. My sister, bless you, queen, for those kaftans you send up here for the sisters. Yeah, woe unto the heathen, Shemuel Yisrael. All right, it's all good, y'all. All praises, all glory, all honor, all honor. It'd be good. Ima Shambula, blessings to you. In the building. And this is beautiful. This is beautiful, y'all, because look, we about to enter right into the next prayer hour. When the heavens were open. Ron Lemons, bless you, Hebrew. Bless you, Hebrew. Blessings to you. All right. Y'all in the building. All right. Joy Lamb 747. Rodney Davis. Yasha Eliezer, my born again brethren. Yeah, y'all in the building. All praises, all glory, all honor. All right, y'all, we about to pray on out. All right, let us humble our hearts, humble our minds. All right, humble our hearts, humble our minds. And, uh, you know, surrender to the Holy Spirit, man, surrender. All right, surrender to the Most High, His Son, and the Set Apart Spirit. Uh, ask Nehemiah if you want to, if you want, sister, if you can't ask Nehemiah if you want to get on up. Yeah. Surrender to the spirit, man. Be obedient in these last hours. Be obedient in these last hours. Yeah, do not pay out for us to be evil. Know that. Adversary try to stop a little something. We ain't have visuals, but hey, we still rolling. Burn some incense as we burn some frankincense as we send in up prayers. Our praise is glory and honor. The heathen still got arrows up in Atlanta, huh? Come. That's right. The faith of a mustard seed, y'all. Y'all hope the testimony of the Messiah is everywhere, y'all, in every place. All right? Even the books, a lot of these Israelites scared of. All right? Let's get her done. 
Abino, Shibasimai, Jikade, Shimka, Tabo, Makute Ka, Yeyase, Ratsonka, Kabasimai, Kane, Baoret, Etlakim, Kuke Nu, Tang Lanu, Hayo, Uslak Lanu. Oh, oh. Kata Enu, Kamo, Shell So King, Gum, Anaknu, Lakotin, Lanu, Wao, Tabi Enu, Lide, Nisayo, Ki, In, Kops Enu, Mean Hara, Ki Laka, Hamam Laka, Wahagura, Wahati Varet. Lao me, Ola me, Amen, Hallelujah, 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 Praise the mighty Yah, Yahweh, 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 Elohim, El El Yod, Rain down, Your Ruach, Hakodesh, Let Your power and Your mind live. In us forever, Bahashem, Hamashiach, Yahushua, Yod Hey Wah Hey, Yahweh, Elohim, El El Yod, rain down your ruach, Hakodesh, let your power and your mind live in us forever, Bahashem, Hamashiach. Yahushua, Yod Hey Wah Yahweh, Elohim, El El Yod, break down your ruach, Hakodesh, let your power and your mind live in us forever. Bahashim, Hamashiach, Yahushua, Yod Hey Wah Yahweh, Elohim. El El Yod, rain down your Ruach, Hakodesh, let your power and your mind live in us forever. Bahashim, Hamashiach, Yahushua, Yod Hey Wah Yahweh, Elohim, El El Yod, rain down your Ruach, Hakodesh. Let your power and your mind live in us forever. Bahashim, Hamashiach, Yahushua, Yodei Wahey, Yahweh, Elohim, El El Yod, rain down your Ruach, Hakodesh. Let your power and your mind live in us. Forever, Bahashim, Hamashiach, Yahushua, Yod Hey Wah Yahweh, Elohim, El El Yod, break down your Ruach, Hakodesh, let your power and your mind live in us forever, Bahashim, Hamashiach.
All praise. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. All praise. Spirit moving in this deal. Ah, man, man, man. All praise. Testimony of the Messiah is a sure foundation, y'all. Sure foundation. Let nobody tell you otherwise. They're a liar. They're a liar, you dig? All right, y'all, we about her. Y'all stay in spirit. Stay in truth. <laughs> Let nobody steal your crown. All right, Yahoo. Yahoo, Yahoo. If these Negro still pop fireworks over the city of St. Louis. You know what I'm saying? Today. today yeah, today, you know what I'm saying? We got together on a madness. You know what I'm saying? And we came together. Powerful prayers. We dig. Powerful lesson. I mean, look, the Messiah, I got to do is slow down and read, y'all. Be all over the place. All over. You understand? So until the next time, y'all stay focused. Uh, through the grace and will of the Most High, you dig? We'll be right back. You know what I'm saying? Right back tomorrow evening, probably like from 8 to 12, 30 or something. You know what I'm saying? Bringing in the Shabbat. And uh, let's get her done. Thank y'all for y'all prayers and y'all support. You understand? And uh, love the Most High. And love his people. Next time. Shalom lakam, meaning peace and completeness to you all. Shalom. <laughs>